potential conditions. And he, he was so happy to call that there were children with us on a presentation. I didn't want to go back to it. It's a good interest. The world is more than the amount of the people there that will work in the age to see all the men. And I only said for that. The results are approving in agreement to share the existing experimental measurements. Thank you for the scientific sources, the bibliographic sources. This is of the Soviet the CNL reacting solution information of it, which is contained in a wide range of concentrations. One when you say we are not present in the solution, this reaction can be modeled by a single solubility product between the total of the factor concentration. Uh, in addition, the developed approach provides an explicit equation but the amount of precipitation that formed in any mixture. So that the factor of equilibrium concentration uh, can be determined. And the result can be extended to other mixtures of large to a mixture of large organic ions with over the charge, such as the system. We require a thorough understanding also of the region where civilization does not occur in a narrow range of concentrations. It should be noted. But a developed model can be applied to the solid phase of any document. So the X and the Amaiyon is Y. Thank you for your attention. Uh, please, uh, question. Uh, dear Professor Power, thank you very much for your presentation. Now the session is open for discussion. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, I see that uh, 23 online participants now. Uh, uh, please, uh, uh, will you uh, start uh, the discussion? Uh, which questions uh, to uh, Professor Pover? Professor uh, uh, can you uh, uh, expect the wide scale implementation of this process? Uh, what can you uh, see? Uh, uh, as, uh, as I said, uh, this, uh, this type of small template is a good control for different. А, вопрос пошли. Я, к сожалению, не удалось нам вывести таблицы и презентацию, поэтому я буду говорить, ну, только текстовую часть не демонстрируя материала на слайдах, но мы с Теодором Григорьевичем Лупашко договорились, что подготовим совместную статью в журнал ну, «Химия», «Молдовский химический журнал», и там уже значит, коллеги могут ну, если им будет интересно, взять информацию, цифры и так далее. Профессор Мухин, э, так ваша презентация была на экране? Да, да нет, не была, по-моему. По я, я ее не давал. Нет, нет я буду говорить, нет презентации. Да, нет, 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 нет. То, то, то повар. Я вам скажу красиво и очень ясно. Итак, начинаю 15 минут.
Дорогие коллеги, сегодня практически вся планета, особенно районы массового проживания людей, подвергнут серьезным экологическим угрозам, главными из которых являются традиционные заражения территории, угнетение, угнетение почвы кислотными дождями, загрязнение почвы химическими веществами и пестицидами, разливы неводки на суше на море и загрязнение атмосферы. В свете вышесказанного особое внимание должно быть уделено экологической безопасности агропромышленного опыта, потому что почвы сельхозугодий на планете всего 6%, а к концу 21 века население Земли будет 10 миллиардов. То есть еда вырастает только на почву. И вот в силу своих физик и химических свойств углеродные ацербенты, или можно говорить активные угли, являются уникальными и идеальными сорбционными материалами, позволяющими решать большой круг вопросов защиты окружающей среды, человека и инфраструктуры. Активные угли, ну это вот выстроенные 50 летним работы в области активных углей, звучит так. Это высокопористые углеродные материалы, получаемые в виде порошка или зерен из различного углеродсодержащего сырья, имеющие высокие поглотительные характеристики по примесям, доходящимся в очищаемых средах, в воздухе, в воде, жидкости, почте. Вот я должен сказать, это нигде еще не звучало, что активный уголь второй по широте применения материал на Земле и первый по своей поверхности. Вот если первый по широте применения – это железо, естественно, но раскатав тонну железа в лист, мы закроем площадь 100 квадратных метров. А вот если мы возьмем тонну активного угля и его внутреннюю поверхность, удельную поверхность, то она составит в одной тонне активного угля одну тысячу квадратных километров. То есть какой огромный ацетонный потенциал заключает в себе активный уголь. Среди разнообразных углеродно-сжирающих материалов, которые могут быть использованы для получения активного угля, конечно, особый интерес представляют растительные отходы, как постоянно возобновляемый источник э, сырья. Интенсификация производства во всех промышленно развитых странах, именно агропромышленных странах, привела к увеличению объема сокомы зерновых, масличных, технических и других культур. Как только, например, в России соломы зерновых и крупных культур каждый год образуется больше 100 миллионов тонн. Я думаю, что и в Молдавии объемы соломы достаточно большие. Однако в настоящее время они утилизируются довольно нерационально. А. Или они запахиваются в почву, или Б. Они сжигаются. В то время как они могут быть перстивным сырьем для производства активных углей, особенно агропромышленного назначения. В наших работах с академиком Юрием Спиридоновым было показано, что внесение в почву загрязненных гербицидами или загрязненных остатками гербицидов в количестве 50-100 кг на гектар позволяет повысить урожайность сельхозкультур, возделанных севооборотов на 20-80% и получить абсолютно экологически чистую продукцию растений и подстав. Вот поэтому взяли очень большой и широкий объем исходной соломы, проверили ее на содержание углерода. Оказалось, что содержание твердого углерода в соломах разных культур, ну, таких как солома шутица, солома ржи, солома овса, солома рапса, содержание углерода составляет 38-40%, а в каменном угле содержание углерода 80%. То есть ну, уже твердую углеродную основу в соломе половина от каменного угля. То есть это прекрасное сырье для получения активного угля. Поэтому получали и по традиционному методу парогазовой активации. Активный уголь из соломы. Это загружали в реторту нарезанную солому. Подвергали цепализации со скоростью 5-7 градусов в минуту до температуры 450-500 градусов. Выдерживали при этой температуре 30 минут и затем переводили торту в режим активации при температуре 850 градусов. Активация продолжалась 30-60 минут, зависит от типа соломы. И вот что мы получили. Мы получили, это будет потом опубликовано, я надеюсь, что Тодор Лукашку мы подготовим эту статью. Значит, взяли соломы четырех массичных культур. Рапс, рыжих нигер, 
двух горчичных культур. Горчица белая, горчица саремская. Четырех зерновых культур. Ветвей, пшеница, овес, рожь. Пяти пищевых кормовых культур. Соя, редька, амарант, топинамбур, клемов. И техническая культура льна. Вот получив активные угли из этого типа углеродсвязающего сырья растительного, мы получили их характеристики. Оказалось, что все эти угли имеют очень высокоразвитый объем, суммарный объем пор. От 2,5 до 4 сантиметров кубических килограмм. Это о чем говорит? Что разный объем трассных пор позволяет получать на основе таких углей различные путем импринирования катализаторы и хипоглотители. Следует отметить, что очень был развит у всех этих типов углей объем сорбирующих микро- и мезопор. Он составлял примерно 0,48-0,50 сантиметров кубичной на грамм соломы. Такой объем сорбирующих микро- и мезопор. В то время, когда даже у промышленных углей ну, на каплогольной основе объем этих пор составляет 0,20-0,25. То есть практически в два раза выше, чем у промышленных углей из каменно-угольного сырья. Наиболее, конечно, ну, сердцом активными оказались, конечно, активные угли и соломы именно зерновых культур, то есть ячменя, пшеницы, оса, ржи. Они имели суммарный объем, развитый суммарный объем микроэмин запор, 0,44-0,73 кубика на грамм. При этом и имели хорошие ассорционные свойства, то есть где-то 50-64 по йоду, и около 50 миллиграмм на грамм по петленному голубому. То есть это значит, достаточно высокие сапционные показатели. Мы измерили пористую структуру этих углей на, естественно, приборе АСАП-2020 компании Микромеритекс американской. Получили всю гамму пористых структур. Мы потом ее, я думаю, с Адором вам дадим, она будет у вас в работе. Но я сейчас делаю просто обзор, не показывая изотермы. Мы получили, что объем микропор у всех этих углей достаточно разный. Но находится в пределах 0,12-0,20 см кубичный на грамм. Это ну, соответствует промышленным углям промышленного назначения. При этом мы можем видеть микропор, наблюдался в пассивной культуре. Вне зависимости от типа соломы, размер микропор, то есть полная ширина, не полная ширина, а полная ширина, практически была у всех вот, видов соломы эти 15 типов соломы. Одинаково составляло 1,51, 1,58 нанометр. Это полная ширина еще. То есть это тонкие микрофоны. Единственное, что только у рыжика они оказались чуть больше. 1,66. Высокоразвитая микромезопористость будет способствовать хорошей кинетике. Вот то, что там высокая суммарная пористость, высокая кинетики адсорбции. То есть, когда мы начали делать тесты опыт, я сейчас покажу, Главное направление активных углей из солодочных культур – это применить в агропромышленной области для детификации почвы, для повышения плодородия. Так вот, когда я сначала делал, мы увидели, что у активных углей из соломы эффект снятия пестицидов на нагрузке или эффект сохранения урожая выше, чем у промышленных активных углей. Выше. Я не мог понять, почему. Так, думаю, микропорт вроде как бы на уровне, или иногда даже минус на уровне. А эффект намного выше. А оказалось, что у промышленных углей суммарный объем пор, вот, особенно макропор, ну, примерно 0,4. А у кокос углей там 0,3. Макропор. А у этих углей, вы помните, я вначале говорил, 4 кубика на грамм. То есть токсикал из почвенного раствора просто без сопротивления сразу проходит к, ну, к ну, поверьте, короче, к объему к энергии взаимодействия микропоров и сразу поглощается. То есть тут важен быстрый эффект поглощения, чтобы корневая система рассады или зерна быстро проросла, а там уже на глубине 12 метров уже гербицида нет, он поверху держится. То есть моментально убрать, чтобы зерно проросло, и дальше эффект. И вот я этот эффект оценили в Институте питологии в России, в Галицино. Есть такой у нас в России Институт фитопатологии в отделе Академика Спиридонова. Ну, то есть для этого мы выбрали тест-культуру подсолнечник, опыт проводили в горшках, в пластиковых горшках 600 граммов почвы и загрязняли почву гербицидом в дозе 5 грамм на гектар. Гербицид был ЗИНГРП. Вы видите, 5 грамм на гектар – это смертельная доза. Вот 5 грамм на гектар у вас редиска, корнеплоды, 
Редко она вообще расти не будет. Просто не будет расти. И вот так даже сильнейший дождь здесь взяли. Это все, я думаю, мы с Теодором Григорьевичем потом народу Болдову подарим психологию. Так вот. Ну и что получили? Когда мы этот опыт ввели в его так называемый лаборатории искусственного климата, или называется камеры Фетча, Ферги, там ты ставишь тестовые горшки, включаешь режим той или иной зоны выращивания, ну, средней полосы или Болдовы, и там поливается, греется, солнце встает, заходит, и вот тебя через 30 дней, называется вегетационный опыт, приходит сниж... срез выросшего растения по краю горшка и взвешивается. И вот что мы получили. Я называю просто, извините, но без, как говорится, таблиц, но вижу на цифры, что у нас снижение, снижение растения, в данном случае тест был еще раз, на подсолнечнике, там, где не было активного угля, составило снижение, снижение 73%. То есть урожай был, ну, по сути, 25%. А там, где мы применили активный уголь из соломы, сыпицы и овса, снижение составило всего 5%. То есть 95 урожая сохранило, 95%. И даже мы взяли лучший в мире уголь по чину применения, это называется Гроссейф, голландская компания Налит. Так вот, у Гроссейфа снижение зеленой массы растений составило... 12,5%. Три раза. То есть сохранность у нас оказалась три раза выше, чем у Гроссейфа. То есть, это очень эффективный метод, короче, идентификации почв. Делали на других землях. Мы только там в таблице дадим. Мы, мы делали на рапсе, делали на томатах. Везде эффект придержается один и тот же. Поэтому заканчивая свое сообщение, можно сказать, что Почти это четко подтверждено. Но у активных углей из соломы, в связи с их специфики, потому что это угли или порошковые, или угли мелкозернистые. Ну, это суть исходного сырья. Но у них огромные и эффективные области применения – это очистка сточных вод от органических загрязнений, прежде всего сточных вод с предприятий. Это некоторые процессы очистки химфаропрепаратов. И, наконец, Флотация рут цветных металлов. Но флотация рут там в Молдове подождет, когда там будет полезно ископаемый. А вот что самое ценное, это что огромная потребность в таких углях порошковых и легких в очистке выбросов мусоросжигательных заводов. Вот у нас в России планируется строить 20 мусоросжигательных заводов. И, и действительно, сжигание твердого мусора – это самая эффективная технология его утилизации. Уже горы, горы загружены за завальную планеты этим твердым мусором. И в Молдове такие вещи могут быть. То вот эти угли в дозе 10% активного угля, порошкового и легкого, и 90% извести. Вот эта вот шихта вдувается в систему газоочистки мусоросжигательных заводов. Все. И такие заводы работают во всем мире, в пределах городов. И никаких проблем с загрязнением канцерогенами. Поэтому, если на огромных объемах Соломы разных культур, еще раз, зерновых, пластичных, технических, пищевых, в Молдавии будет организовано производство, то я думаю, что это довольно серьезный экспортный потенциал, для, потому что это очень легкий и эффективный сорбент для вот очистки и выброса именно мусоросжигательных заводов. Ну и в заключение я хочу сказать, что вы видите, что мы получили широкий спектр активных углей, они будут потом, мы подготовим Теодору Героевичу Лупашку публикацию, вот, они позволяют многие вопросы, особенно в агропромышленном комплексе, решать эффективно и с пользой для повышения качества жизни людей. Спасибо. And uh, for this purpose, uh, as I understood from your uh, talk, uh, preferences has active coil um, from uh, uh, the from straw brand straw, uh, Solomon, Sajona Solomon. 
it, 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 it is one uh, big scale implementation. Uh, another problem, especially for Moldova, a very big problem, I will mention this problem in my talk after your presentation. Uh, we have uh, um, the residual pesticide. In Moldova, uh, it was uh, historically, it was very uh, strong developed agriculture. Uh, it, was, uh, it was maybe the highest level in the former Soviet Union agriculture, and uh, natural, it has used a lot of chemi, a lot of uh, the pesticide, and it was uh, 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 something near 2000 places where storage is for pesticides. Uh, now they are uh, eliminated, but uh, the places where pesticide uh, were storage uh, in soil uh, remain residual pesticide. Uh, for uh, detoxification, for uh, destruction of this residual pesticide, maybe uh, one of elements, uh, we liberated uh, nanoparticles, uh, artificial enzyme for uh, based on zero valent iron, but it needs a good oil because combination of active oil will be covered by nanoparticles, active nanoparticles, which will serve as catalyzator, or better to say, artificial ferments, nanazine. And uh, it is necessary good quality active oil. For this purpose, uh, your oil uh, maybe is also has advantages. Uh, what для uh, detoxicации почв uh, активный уголь, uh, приготовленный из uh, сожженной соломы, uh, имеет преимущество. Я так понял, что у него намного больше активная поверхность. Да? Не поверхность, у него диффузионное сопротивление маленькое. Okay. То есть развитый поверхность макропор объясняет низ диффузионное сопротивление и быстро молекула из потока попадает на адсорбционное поле микропора. То есть активная поверхность более эффективно используется именно благодаря да. малому диффузионному сопротивлению. Да, 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 да. То есть это для Молдовы это действительно это фактически неограниченный ресурс, потому что и, и, и в наши дни это, сельское хозяйство и агрикультура является самым развитым сектором, и большое количество соломы производится. То есть вот это вот, в принципе может послужить для производства продукта с большой добавочной стоимостью. Не просто ее сжигать как топливо, а из нее готовить да. хороший продукт медицинских целей. Это тоже сорбенты будут очень высокоэффективны. Будут... Это будет нанопродукт, нанопродукт, потому что скоро на один нанометр. И, и, и при том с малым дефицитом сорбентов. Понятно. Я, знаете, хочу сказать так, что сегодня в России одна крупная голландская компания поставила аппараты уже, аппараты пиролиза опилок, пока опилок. Но мы с ними говорили недавно, они говорят, что наши аппараты позволяют вести пиролиз такого продукта, как солома, но ну, измельченный. То есть солома пиролизуется, у нас уже получается полупродукт. Нам только достроить сейчас, мы с голландцами обсуждаем, только модуль активации. Поэтому, если мы, и как говорили тогда, вроде бы летом будет встреча наша там в Кижневе, это не, совершенно, наверное, небольшие траты, сделать дополнительную секцию, и мы можем в любом зернопроизводящем, соломообразующем регионе Молдовы этот мод, он занимает площадь, там, ну, помещение, там, примерно, ну, 20 на, 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 на 30 метров, все. Так что, вот, я думаю, впереди у нас есть интересная работа. Спасибо большое. Действительно, это широкие перспективы для, и экспортный потенциал у Молдовы в этой области достаточно просматривается это хороший. So, let me present new opportunities in the detection of environmental pollutants, results of our investigation in non-azims. Recently, a new class of artificial ferments, so-called nanozymes, has been proposed. Nanozymes are nanomaterials with own enzyme-like activity 
uh, which demonstrate high catalytic properties. Compared to nat natural en enzymes, uh, nanoferments, uh, artificial nanoferments have better stability and can be mass produ produced uh, in um, industry at low cost, uh, and their properties can be quickly developed and adapted to various uh, re regimes. Thanks to these advantages, they have demonstrated wide applications in monitoring and in destruction of pollutants and uh, for purposes of cleaning of environment. Both problems are very actual for the uh, Republic of Moldova. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to mention that in Moldova, it was widely used uh, uh, and nowadays more than one and a half thousand points in Moldova are polluted with residual pesticides even after uh, removing of storages where the pesticides were storaged uh, and implemented in agriculture. Uh, so as you can see in uh, slides, uh, uh, on the uh, top uh, bottom of the slide. It, uh, 25 years after removal of the uh, storage of this time, uh, here is uh, one of, uh, it is just one village, Bricini uh, uh, Noi, in uh, Rayon Sengeri, where uh, the, uh, you can see the uh, ruins of the uh, storage. And uh, up to now, uh, it is moon um, uh, landscape. And uh, we uh, used our nanozymes for uh, destruction of residual pesticide, and they, uh, they demonstrated a very, very effective destruction of the residual pesticide. That's why it is one important uh, role of uh, artificial. Uh, enzymes or nanozymes or catalyzator. Uh, another problem is uh, the uh, acid drains. It is all over the world. In Moldova, it is not exception. Um, our agriculture and uh, uh, health of uh, people um, are uh, damaged uh, due to uh, industrial uh, provocative acid drains. That's why uh, the monitoring of, of these pollutants, pesticides and acid rains, it is uh, an important problem and it can be resolved uh, using the artificial ferments, artificial uh, nanozymes. Uh, some uh, enzyme, uh, enzymatic type nanomaterials like um, uh, firm 304, zinc firm uh, 204, uh, have demonstrated uh, very strong peroxidized activity and uh, they can change the color of solutions. Uh, for example, this hydroperoxid, and uh, uh, we can propose the colorimetric biosensors. Uh, in our laboratory, uh, uh, the big amount of uh, nanoparticles with uh, uh, nanozyme properties are produced using the uh, uh, iron oxide. Uh, and uh, the uh, method of And uh, from this nano, uh, uh, nano, uh, nanoparticles, uh, zinc ferrum 204 and zinc O, uh, zinc ferrum 204 nanocomposite uh, has uh, fermentative properties, type E, and uh, zinc oxide uh, uh, demonstrate photocatalytic properties. And uh, uh, these two uh, uh, nanoparticles, uh, type of nanoparticles we produced and prepared uh, the uh, targets for monitoring sputtering. And, and using a process of monitoring sputtering, 
preparent heater structures that think from 204. Sorry. Um, uh, think of theorem 204 and think of uh, uh, targeted and on the glass substrate uh, uh, using electron spectrum deposits of heterostructures. And uh, they, uh, here is uh, schematically uh, presented the heterostructure thing O uh, and covered by thing theorem 204. And uh, they demonstrate catalytic uh, activity uh, to the uh, hydrogen peroxide, which uh, we have in the uh, acid rains. And uh, as a result of photocatalytic processes, uh, we, uh, we can detect the concentration of the uh, peroxide uh, using the solution of tetrametyl benzidine. Uh, it will change the color depending on the concentration of the peroxide. Uh, here is the scheme of, uh, of the processes uh, which we have uh, in such heater structures. And um, we have measured the uh, density, optical density of the solution uh, depending on the concentration of uh, the peroxide. Uh, for uh, for uh, 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 for uh, colorimetric uh, measurements, we use the spectrophotometer, uh, uh, SF46 uh, spectrophotometer, and here, the, uh, here one can see the solutions, solutions of, of this uh, tetrametyl benzidine with uh, different concentration of peroxide. Uh, one can see that the uh, color or optical density of the solution uh, uh, change and uh, uh, demonstrate the strong dependence on the concentration of uh, uh, hydroperoxide. And uh, using this quantitative method, we can, uh, uh, we can have monitoring of the concentration of the uh, dangerous acids uh, uh, in the uh, rain water. So that's why uh, in our uh, recent work, we have uh, developed the calorimetric sensor uh, with property of peroxidase. Uh, based on the junctions of uh, uh, zinc uh, iron oxide and zinc oxide. Uh, the uh, uh, minimum detectable concentration of hydrogen uh, peroxide in rainwater is very small. This is uh, um, uh, uh, 0 0.02 uh, uh, micromol. That's why it is rather sensitive sensors and uh, using the network of such sensors we can uh, organize uh, online monitoring of the uh, uh, pollution in the uh, surface water uh, rain uh, rain water in the republic uh, thank you for your attention and uh, uh, if uh, any questions you're welcome thank you Can I ask the question? Yes, yes, please. Uh, thank you for your nice talk. I, uh, did I catch correctly that you use your nanoparticles to activate hydrogen peroxide to produce OH radical, which uh, oxidize your dye uh, and okay. modify the color? Yes, exactly. You're correct. That's why uh, 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 the color will be changed and the optical density will be changed. Ah. And uh, we, we can uh, see it just uh, with our eyes. 
but we need the quantitative um, uh, um, uh, numbers. That's why we used spectrophotometer just to, to make uh, each uh, quantitative and more uh, uh, for records. We can, uh, uh, we can uh, this result of measurements um, uh, save and uh, uh, archivate. That's why uh, the spectrophotometer uh, we uh, uh, use just for quantification the, this process. Okay. You, you asked him. I understand. Uh, do you need a light for activation or it's a thermal activation? Uh, this is optical uh, activation. Uh, uh, this is ultraviolet uh, uh, okay. radiation from the uh, sunlight activate this process. That's why it is photo activated uh, catalytic process. Okay, I see. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, yes, and uh, any other questions? Uh, if not, uh, maybe small one. Uh, you, you use only model system, or you try to measure the concentration of hydrogen peroxide in some natural, uh, in rainwater, for example. You see that uh, we uh, measure uh, the uh, concentration of uh, hydrogen peroxide in solutions which we prepared with uh, uh, hydrogen peroxide, and we use water from from uh, the uh, water uh, uh, pipe just the drinking water and okay. yes that's why uh, we uh, we we found a small amount of hydrogen peroxide even in the uh, drinking water that's why uh, it doesn't matter uh, where you take the water you can make analysis just for test measurements, we prepared uh, uh, hydrogen peroxide um, uh, solution which, uh, with various concentration, just to calibrate this process. And we, we found that this uh, good uh, sensitivity and good reproducibility of uh, the measurements of such uh, uh, sensor. Okay, thank you again. And one of the important implementation of such sensors is not only for rainwater, it is, it is a big problem which does exist not only in Moldova, but in all countries, this problem, especially in industrial countries near of the big factories. But uh, another problem is uh, concentration of hydrogen peroxide in milk, because the European, European country has a very strong uh, uh, limitation for these impurities in milk. That's why the, uh, they have standard and they measure concentration of uh, 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 hydrogen peroxide and it, it should be uh, uh, very, very small. That's why um, for uh, monitoring of the concentration of peroxide, uh, hydrogen peroxide in milk, especially for export uh, purposes, it uh, shall be used such sensitive sensors and the process should be automized. That's why uh, uh, it is one of the possible implementations of such devices. So my name is Trina Mikola, I'm a PhD student, and I have as a supervisor, professor at the Commission of Luca. Uh, today I want to present the study of synergic and anti-synergic interactions of some great antioxidants with organic acid. But first of all, I want to mention I'm sorry, just just a moment. Okay. So first of all, the synergic effect is uh, occurring when uh, the anti antioxidant effect of two or more different antioxidants applied together is greater than the sum of the individual antioxidant effect applied separately. 
The synergic uh, interactions have many advantages. First of all, they increase the efficient efficacy that leads to higher quality and extended shelf life of foods. Secondly, reduced amount of antioxidants needed, thus a lower production cost, and a reduced use or total replacement of synthetic antioxidants, uh, antioxidants which may have adverse health effects. Uh, so, um, the synergic effect is calculated by dividing the experimental value of the inhibition per percentage of the mixture uh, to the theoretical value, as you can see in the equation one. Here is important to mention the fact that if the uh, result of the equation one is less than one, then there is an um, anti-synergic effect. If it's equal to one, then there's, there is an um, additive effect, and if it's higher than one, then there is a synergic effect. So uh, the study demonstrated that the tendency to increase the vitamin intake with the supplements may have a negative effect on the human's health, as long as their high concentration of the vitamins could generate a pro-oxidant effect. So in this regard, many studies are concentrated on the establishment of the, synerg of the synergic antioxidant effect by using the natural components as they are concentration found in foods, like fruits, vegetables, herbs. Having this in mind, we studied the polyphenols and organic acid content in local uh, white and grape, grape varieties during two years, 2020 and 2021. So we studied the total phenolic content, the pro-anthocyanidins uh, pro content, the anthocyanin content, uh, and organic acid content. Um, in two white grape varieties and two red grape varieties, uh, from the experimental plantation of scientific, scientific practical institute of horticulture and food technologies, situated in the central part of the country. Um, so ha having this data and the data from the literature, we could establish uh, the optimal concentration needed for our, our experiments, as you may see in the table one. As uh, antioxidants, we used um, ascorbic acid, catechin, gallic acid, dehydroxyfumaric acid, and uh, as organic acids, we used tartaric, citric, and oxalic acids. Uh, for uh, establishment of the synergic or anti-synergic interactions, we use the DPPH method. Um, so we could follow the decrease of the absorbance, as you may see in the figure three, at the 570 nanometers, which basically was caused by the addition of the antioxidant to the to the um, to the free radical, which normally is purple, but uh, the reduced form uh, of the DPPH is colorless, so there is the decrease in absorbance. In this slide, you can see the determined uh, efficient concentration for each tested antioxidant, and here. Um, ascorbic acid, dehydroxyfumaric acid, gallic acid, and catechin uh, possess a very good antioxidant uh, activity. Um, as long as the lower efficient concentration is, the higher uh, antioxidant activity is. So here, gallic acid possess the lower EC50 content, uh, value, uh, this meaning that the higher antioxidant uh, activity. Down on this slide, uh, in figure e, um, 4 E, F, e, and G, you can see that oxalic acid, tartaric, and citric acid do, do not possess any antioxidant activity, regardless their concentration. Here you can see the um, efficient concentrations for each combination of antioxidants uh, with organic acid tested. Uh, so, um, the results depicted in the figure five uh, are also, um, uh, the values are also described here in the table two, and I want to draw your attention here. Uh, for example, um, ascorbic acid um, applied alone with no organic acid have an efficient concentration of 0 0.24, but by but um, by adding the tartaric acid, citric acid, oxalic acid, this value is decreasing. This meaning, meaning um, 
the enhancement of the antioxidant activity, especially in the combination with dehydroxyamic acid, where the EC50 value is decreased from 0.24 to a minimum of 0.09. Gallic acid in the presence of tartaric citric and dehydroxyamic acid, well, basically with the first two, uh, it doesn't change anything, but with dehydroxyamic acid, the EC50 um, value is increasing, this meaning, meaning actually the Re reducing of the antioxidant activity. On the other hand, catechin with dehydroxyfumaric acid is uh, has a decreased EC50 uh, value, this meaning an increased uh, antioxidant activity. So from 0 0.1, it's uh, reduced to 0 0.05. Uh, here you can see um, the results for the synergic and anti-synergic interactions of ascorbic acid with organic acids. And just to be clear, um, the synergic or, or anti-synergic effect is calculated for each sample um, tested. So for ascorbic acid with oxalic acid or with citric acid, there are a maximum of some um, additive effect. But in, with tartaric acid, there are um, some synergic effect. As you may see, that the result is uh, higher than one. But especially with dehydroxyfumaric acid, where the maximum value is uh, almost 1.2. And here you can see that the synergic effect is dependent on the concentrations of both antioxidants, as long as increasing the concentrations of ascorbic acid and dehydroxyfumaric acid, the synergic effect, effect is also increased. Uh, gallic acid in the presence of, of tartaric and citric acid, um, well, mm, only um, gave uh, some additive effect, but with dehydroxyfumaric acid, there is only um, anti synergic effect. But catechin with the dehydroxyfumaric acid, as you may see from uh, from the last table, while well, it has a very, very good uh, synergic effect, uh, especially with the lower, lowest concentration of dehydroxyfumaric acid. And this is actually very important because in grapes, this compound is found at very low concentrations. In this slide, you can see some of our, our previous results on the interaction of ascorbic acid in, and dehydroxyfumaric acid in wine model solution and in ethanol studied through the stop flow spectroscopy. So I would like to say that in a reaction with DPPH, the ascorbic acid and dehydroxyfumaric acid possess higher observed constants in the wine model uh, solution compared to ethanol. So this you can clearly see from the table three where the observed constants for dehydroxyfumaric acid are 10 times higher in one model solution compared to ethanol. And for ascorbic acid, um, these constants are two times higher in one model solution. Also, the antioxidant activity of, mi of mixtures of various concentrations of ascorbic acid and dehydroxyfumaric acid is enhanced in wine matrix compared to ethanol. And this you can see from the figure nine, especially B and E, where are represented the absorption, absorption spectra for the reaction of DPPH with the mixture of the antioxidants at the time zero and at two seconds here uh, in ethanol. And you can see that this difference is of about 0 0.3 absor absorbance units. But here in the wine um, matrix, wine model solution, this difference uh, is um, doubled of 0 0.6 absorbance units. So this meaning that, um, yes, in, uh, in the wine model solution, the antioxidant activity of uh, these components uh, is enhanced. In conclusions, well, I, I would like just to, to, to mention some of them because I already enunciated, enunciated the, 
uh, the majority. So the synergic interaction, uh, interactions are found between uh, ascorbic acid and tartaric acid, but especially between ascorbic acid and dehydroxyfumaric acid. And also catechin and dehydroxyfumaric acid showed a very good synergic effect. Gallic acid um, with the, all the uh, organic acids show only an additive effect, but with dehydroxyfumaric acid, um, demonstrated a strong anti-synergic effect. According to the data obtained previously on the interaction of ascorbic acid and dehydroxyfumaric acid in different media, the study of all the described interactions in the Y matrix is of great interest. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for your presentation. Please, uh, any questions? Uh, any question to Krina uh, uh, I have a small question. Uh, what about concentration of oxygen in your solutions? Uh, is it a normal oxygen? Well, the reactions were uh, uh, were made the, the, in the normal uh, conditions. So actually, we didn't check the concentration. Ah, because some of your compounds can be oxidized by oxygen with formation, for example, uh, superoxide radical, it's a uh, pro pro-oxidant, I think. <laughs> so maybe it's uh, some explanation of your different effects. Uh, well, I, I can not tell for sure, but uh, um, the solution were made uh, up to date, so I don't think that there is a, um, such a, a big uh, uh, error, because this should be an error, uh, as you, uh, what, what you are asking. I just wonder about uh, possible formation of some oxidative species in uh, your solution due to the presence of dissolved oxygen. Yes, I understand. Well, well, I can say that it was everything was made up uh, in the day of the experiment. So, mm -hmm. so, but the concentration of oxygen, it, uh, I didn't measure it, so I can. Okay. Measure. Okay, dear colleagues, uh, and dear chairman, it's great pleasure for me to participate in the meeting. Uh, last time I have opportunity to be in Chisinau 10 years ago during the fifth conference. Uh, so today I present you a, a talk where I try to show you how to apply some iron, some simple iron hydroxide complex and oxalate complexes in ecological photochemistry, which this work was done in close collaboration with our Chinese colleague from Wuhan University. Okay few words about motivation of this work. Uh, maybe you know that uh, iron species actively studied because they, upon their photoactivation, they can produce some um, reactive oxygen species, mainly OH radical, which are capable for oxidation and mineralization of a variety of different toxic and uh, different toxic pollutants. Yes. Uh, so, such systems are studied actively in the scientific literature. And uh, there is several questions here. First of all, how to produce OH radical? You can do it directly, for example. I will talk uh, further about homogeneous system. I do not speak about heterogeneous uh, photo activation. Uh, okay. From homogeneous system, very attractive hydroxyl complexes of iron. Uh, they produce OH radical with good quantum yield. It's a direct process, but unfortunately, the pH is sharply narrow only, narrow only at pH 3, you can have this protective form. You can improve situation if you add uh, to the system uh, some organic natural organic ligands like oxalate, tetrate, citrate to stabilize iron free uh, ion. In this case, you also can produce OH radical, but it, it needs a rather long chain of thermal reaction after first photochemical reduction step. 
uh, in which you produce organic radical and then this organic radical oxidize thermally this final formation of OH radical. And the main question is, of course, uh, the efficiency of this process. And further, I will speak about this guy, ferrioxalate complex, which is rather popular system in such studies. Okay, so what we usually know and what we have to know about uh, iron complexes, iron polycarboxylates, they have a charge transfer absorption band in the region of the sunlight, so they can be activated by solar radiation. Uh, they initiate photoxidation of uh, different persistent contaminants shown here. Uh, you can use uh, such complexes in rather wide pH working range. It's of course dependent on stability constant. And my oxidative agents here is OH radical. It's shown by different spin traps, product analysis. Uh, and the main problems here, uh, which found here, uh, so we have to know also the reactivity of OH radical with target compounds, which means rate constant. Uh, it's important to estimate efficiency of oxidation in real conditions. And also you need to know the quantum yield of OH radical generation. It showed the efficiency of your photosystem and possibility of its practical application. For uh, iron carboxylates, such information is very, very scarce. So what we want to do is to show, to give some simple affordable approach to determination of uh, few H values during UV photolysis of natural iron free carboxylate complexes and to give a method for direct de determination of rate constant of hydroxyl radical reaction with target compounds. So we utilize uh, several approach. Time resolved, uh, it's a nanosecond laser flash photolysis. And also we use steady state photolysis with different excitation sources and also HPLC for product identification. Okay, so the, what I yeah, start with first part of my talk and what was the idea main? So what we need for, to create um, our, uh, to determine the quantum yield of OH radical, we need a reliable reference system. Here we use a iron free hydroxyl complex, which produce OH radical with very good and well tabulated quantum yields. Uh, we can use a simple and uh, accessible HPLC technique. And of course, we need some selective trap for hydroxyl radical. And here, benzene is a good choice because it's react only with OH radical, not with other rows. And uh, we can monitor by HPLC conversion of the benzene to the phenol with rather good conversion percentage. And for sure, we need some more or less simple calculations. And uh, it's better to avoid um, the step of uh, calibration of intensity of excitation source because usually it's a quite painful procedure. So how it uh, now looks like. So you need to combine uh, the results of two measurements. Uh, first of all, you need just using optical spectroscopy to measure absorption of your uh, reference system, our iron hydroxyl complexes to measure the absorption of your studied system, in our case, in iron oxalate complexes, complex to calculate the percentage of uh, excitation lights, which absorbed in both system. It's quite easy user, Puger uh, Lambert Berra uh, low. And also you need the information about the phenol generation rate in both system. You can easily do it by measuring the phenol by HPLC technique, how fast uh, it's generated during the radiation. So you obtain all these parameters in this formula and with known quantum yield of which radical generation in reference system, you can calculate unknown, uh, unknown value for your system. Okay, this is uh, results for iron oxalate system. Uh, so two dependencies uh, from the ligand concentration, how quantum yield depends on the ligand concentration and how quantum yields uh, depend on the concentration of iron. So you see the uh, values is rather high. So it's 
uh, quantum yield is about 25 percent it's a very very good value i would say it's probably the best uh, the highest value of quantum yield between all complexes of such type and you see no virtually the dependence from the ligand concentration because in all this condition we have only this protective form of iron and there is some dependence from the concentration of uh, iron in trivalent state it's because you have a competition of these two reaction so you see this is initial iron free and you also produce iron 2 by photo excitation so it's competitive reaction and this competition changes the quantum yield of OH radical generation in last reaction also there is some dependence on pH but not a big and we think this dependence is due to two equilibria between the precursor of hydroxyl radicals this is HO2 and O2 minus radicals with such pK and probably also some influence has a shift of equilibrium from uh, trioxalate complex to little more photoactive form with uh, two ligands in the coordination sphere of the metal. And this is finally I show the table where shown the dependence from the excitation wavelengths. In fact, it's practically no dependence and it reflects that uh, Photolysis of complex itself is also practically independent on the excitation wavelengths in the wide uh, range of wavelengths. So it's very good, very stable, and very high quantum yield of H radical production. Uh, how many time I have? Have I time for second part? Okay, uh, just a few words about the maybe second part of my talk about the determination of rate constant. Uh, in principle, there is two main uh, approaches uh, how to do it. One is a steady state uh, approach uh, using some competitor uh, with well-known value of uh, rate constant of reaction with OH radical. And another it's uh, time resolved methods so when you detect the reaction of your OH radical with your target compounds uh, directly. Uh, both methods have some advantages and uh, disadvantages shown here. And I will speak about modification of the time resolve methods. It's a flash photolysis methods, how to remove such some disadvantages of this approach. So just a few words about the methods. In these methods, you have a sample which contains your studied solution, you excited by short laser pulse. You produce in the sample some short-lived transient species. And formation of the species change the intensity of probing light coming through the sample. And so you can measure intensity of the light coming through the sample without excitation and with excitation take a difference and obtain so-called differential absorption. So it's like optical absorption, but not absolute value are but difference between excited and non-excited sample. Okay, so what we proposed, we proposed uh, using uh, such time resolved experiments, uh, uh, iron hydroxyl complex to produce OH radical and use this guy, this is methyl well again, decation as a very good uh, trap of OH radical. In this reaction, you produce this adduct, and this adduct have very nice, very intensive absorption in visible part of region uh, with very good uh, absorption coefficient. So it's easy to monitor its formation and decay. And we test our uh, approach using a big set of organic uh, herbicides different class of herbicides. I don't speak about them too much, just few very important features. They have no own absorption at excitation wavelengths. They are stable in presence of iron-free ions, do not complex with, with these ions. And uh, they produce adducts which have no absorption at registration wavelengths. So in this case, we can uh, obtain rather simple kinetic scheme 
which include reaction of our radical with packet compounds with methyl well again, decay of the product of methyl well again. Uh, this scheme can be solved uh, analytically and uh, we can obtain very nice equation show how absorption of this adduct change in time. And here, very important, uh, we think it's observed rate constant of formation of this adduct, which depends on both concentration of methyl valogen and your studied uh, compound and corresponding reaction rate constants. And here I show a very nice uh, picture uh, when we use herbicide to, to, to for DB as a um, target compounds. So you see we change the concentration of herbicides and how change the kinetic curves. So you see it's nicely fit by this equation. And from the fitting, we can calculate using this formula our rate constant with very good precision. So our approach works quite well. And we compare our results with uh, literature ones. So I don't, don't speak about too much. It's, we find good agreement with literature values, but for sure uh, there is one small problem. If we, we, we use pH free, so if you want to obtain the reactivity of each radical at higher pH, for example, you have different forms of your compound at acid pH and the neutral pH, with different reactivity, you should take care about uh, the results obtained in, by this approach. So this is finally results of my talk. So we can propose the simple and we hope very good methods for determination of quantum yields of OH radicals during photolysis of natural iron carboxylate complexes. But in principle, in all complexes, when you produce OH radical, uh, we study most popular iron free oxalate system. And also we modify our nanosecond laser flash photolysis method for faster determining the rate constant of the activity of H radical with uh, different organic pollutants to find the plus and minus. So finally, I would like to thanks uh, the joint product project between uh, Russian Scientific Fund and National Science Foundation of China for, for support and to all of you for the kind attention. I hope you will have some questions to me. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, uh, questions uh, to uh, Dr. Pernikov. Uh, Professor uh, Pomer uh, wrote in chat uh, two questions. Uh, first uh, question, first uh -huh. question is, do you know all the reactions necessary to uh, estimate uh, parameters of reaction? Uh, this is a question about first or second part of the talk. I believe that to the first part. Uh -huh. uh, for sure, we measure uh, quantum yields. Here, it's a result of many reaction, many thermal reaction found here. So it's integral parameters in somehow. That's why we study it in different conditions, changing the concentration of the ligand, of the iron, the pH, and so on. So it's not so easy to connect uh, this value with some rate constant, for example. Yes, it's not, not, maybe not so obvious. We try for sure, as I shown you here, to find some correlation and hope it, it, this, is, this is the case, but principle it's uh, not so easy maybe not so easy uh, here also to, to this slide is a question what does phi or h mean could you estimate this quantity theoretically uh, phi, uh, phi or h ah, so theoretically oh, oh, in principle it's could be done, yes. Uh, if we obtain the value about from about 25% in general. 
So in principle, it's not far from the theoretical estimations in the optimal conditions. So we, the quantum yield of photolysis of uh, oxalate complexes, it's about 0.6. And, uh, here, uh, the, the then you then you should multiply it by two because uh, organic radical formed to react with another complex. So the quantum yield of iron two, which is uh, important for production of H radical, is about one point two. So it's very very high quantum yield. Mm -hmm. uh, good. And, uh, here uh, one uh, more question: How does the process depend on the pH? Uh, values uh, through equilibrium constants from the pH. Uh, according to our results, there is no big, uh, big influence of pH here. Mm -hmm. So it's. Uh, and, uh, uh, two more questions wrote uh, in chat. Equilibrium constants for complexes theorem three. Uh, with uh, OX are no. Why, yes, yes. Uh, why did you not uh, use uh, this constants for thermodynamic evaluation of the static process with, uh, uh, which depend on uh, pH? Why did you uh, not uh, use uh, this constants for thermodynamic why, why not? We use it. For example, in this calculation, we calculate the percentage of uh, another form of uh, oxalate complex. So it's for sure all equilibrium constants are known. In principle, it's easy to calculate uh, the percentage of different forms. But uh, in our conditions, we mainly have this, this complex. So we have this complex only at a really acidic pH. It's maybe not so interesting from the practical purpose. Uh, so it was interesting for us because we try to variate pH in big uh, range, yes, mm -hmm. to see the influence of this parameter. Uh, but but for, for more interesting part of pH, for example, here you see the main part is uh, this, this guy. So it's, only it's only one photoactive form in solution. Mm -hmm. Yes, it uh, goes uh, the pl plateau. It, uh, it uh, depends on the fee. Uh, and um, uh, one more question from Professor uh, Igor Kovar. Do, do the investigated processes depend on the analytical or initial concentration of iron? Uh, yes. Uh, this picture, this is influence of uh, iron free initial iron free concentration on the quantum yield of H radical generation. Mm -hmm. um, in this uh, range, the influence is not so big. So it's increase and then go to more or less plateau value mm -hmm. at high concentrations. Mm -hmm. Because here, here we have already more or less all light absorbed by our complexes mm -hmm. maybe it's coming to the equilibrium state so it's, it's, it's uh, small concentrations of iron uh, it depends uh, uh, more pronounced uh, and so then uh, yes can... yes mm -hmm. because here at small concentration you have small percentage of light absorbed by the solution so mm -hmm. you have uh, another rate of generation of iron two, mm -hmm. and uh, this change uh, this equilibria, this equilibria, yeah, and you have a change of quantum yield of light mm -hmm. generation. Uh, uh, Professor Power, uh, uh, could you hear the answers uh, to to your question? Uh, yes. Uh, uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. He wrote yes. Okay. I hope so. Uh, yes, uh, he, he heard. Uh, okay. And uh, any more questions? Uh, who else has questions? Uh, it is good that such uh, extension, extended discussion. Uh, 
No, thank you very much for the nice questions. It was really yes, yes. professional questions, and uh, the, uh, it is really a very, very good discussion. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Paul. Thank you very much. I believe it will present my work. So today I would like to present the results of the study of the photochemistry of ferromodidase complex. So iron carboxylate complexes are widely studied as promising essence in advanced oxidation processes. Such complexes under the iridation are able to generate uh, reactive oxygen species, which effectively oxidize the uh, wide range of the organic pollutants. And the formation of active forms occurs from reaction of an organic ligand uh, radical from the process of photolysis with atmospheric oxygen by the same precedent on this slide. Oh, sorry. So the use of the carboxylate complexes with the polycarboxylate acids is promising due to many advances such uh, are presented on this slide. So in this work, we will try to study the photochemistry of the complex of iron with ethylene this ethylene diamine disoxinic acid. So the structure of complex you can see on the slide. This acid is a structural isomer of the tetra ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid data. And this complex has a number of the advantages. So the main one are stability in the white pairs range and possibility of natural persistence in contrast to each structural isomer. However, the quantitative and mechanistic information isn't enough to use this complex in practical purposes. So this system has been investigated for several years. In this slide, you can see some of common environmental pollutants and some works uh, study the effectiveness of usage this complex in the to enhance the photodegradation of such complex of such pollutants. And uh, this work shows that the complex can enhance uh, for the degradation and the different condition up to 100%. So, uh, sorry. So, some of the latest research uh, has significant shortcomings. For example, in the recent work, uh, which shows a uh, mechanism of photolysis, has some shortcomings, as I say early. So in this work, determination of the reaction products of photolysis was incorrectly carried out due to unreached separation in the chromatomass mass spectrometry experiment. And also no experiments were carried out under different conditions. So due to lack of information, we set a task to study the mechanism of photolysis of complex ferromodidase and the quantitative description of the photoprocess in system using the methods of less of less photolysis and stationary photolysis. So determination methods was described early in the previous presentation, so I wouldn't repeat it. So with the help of less of less photolysis, we obtained the next results. First, let's look at the left graph. In this, you can see inverted absorption spectra of complexes marked red. And the initial decay of the complexes, oh, sorry, initial negative change in absorption, we associated with the decay of initial complex. And absorption is uh, in region above 400 nanometers. We uh, associated with the formation of primary intermediate. We believe that this is radical complex and the formula of reaction of the formation is complex. You can see on the slide. So we believed in it because in our laboratory we have obtained such results for another natural acids. So by studying the kinetic of radical complex, we found a relatively long lifetime such as 1.8 milliseconds. So secondly, we use the comparison system to uh, measure quantum yield and it was uh, about 
So let's move on the stationary experiments. Initially, we were also studying the effects of initial iron concentration on the quantum yield. And as you can see on the graph, in the case of the quantum yield of photolysis, there are such effect is subsent both in experiments in air and average value in air marked black. And after purging the solution with argon and its point as a green. So it's important to note that the average value is much higher than the primary quantum yield, which we obtained earlier. And as for quantum yield of OAS formation, this quantum yield decreases with increasing concentration. So based on these experiments, the following conclusion can be drawn. Uh, iron, 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 ferrum two plus is plus is main oxidative form in the photolysis and reaction involved it is very fast. So addition of oxygen leads to appearance, uh, additional reaction with oxygen, but it doesn't affect on the total quantum yield due to small contribution. So the excess of primary quantum yield indicate the presence of secondary reaction of complex with the reaction products. So presence of dependence of quantum yield of radical formation, we associate with the competition of following reaction presented on the slide. So, and this dependence mainly associated with second reaction. So a similar effect has been found for other systems such as oxalate complex as Dr. Potnikov said earlier. So we have also dependence uh, quantum yield of formation of radical formation from PS and explanation of this dependence we associated with acid based balance involved the involved the pair uh, SO2 minus O2 minus radicals. So, uh, so the dependence uh, is similar to the classic titration curve and the PK of this couple is about 4.8. And um, by the approximating by following formula presented on slide, we obtain the similar, uh, similar value, which are in good agreement in the recently survey. Better. So based on experiments data and the literature data on photodegradation process, we put forward the following preliminary mechanism of ferromodidase complex photolysis presented on slide. This mechanism can explain the experimental results, which we obtain such as uh, absence of the dependence of quantum yield of photolysis on dissolved oxygen concentration and the big absence yeah, not, not, not of some sorry. We can freeze the quantum yield of photolysis uh, in opposite from the primary quantum yield. And uh, this data is in good agreement with the literature data. And the main result of this work is that the, our system can be used in the advanced oxygen process. And also we have obtained the following results, as I said earlier. And moreover, we have planned to clarify the photolysis mechanism follow and the determine the efficiency of oxidation in the real systems with some organic pollutants. So thank you for attention. The title of uh, our today presentation, so which I'm uh, given on behalf of the team of researchers from the Institute of Chemistry and also Technical University of Moldova. The title is uh, Application of Metal Oxide Nanoparticles for Photocatalytic um, Treatment of uh, Water Environment. 
uh, homogeneous catalysis um, uh, often uses the uh, active uh, catalytic uh, nanoparticles. It's one of the uh, prospective uh, uh, areas or direction of the development of uh, the modern photocatalysis. Uh, generally, uh, this area is broadly studied already and uh, currently it is used to treat the polluted waters to purify the air from toxic organic compounds and for some other scopes. Uh, the main requirements towards the applied photocatalysts imply uh, the chemical and biological inertness, photocatalytic stability, uh, chip production and uh, activity under the action of solar light. Among the numerous other potential photocatalysts, uh, titanium O2 uh, is close to the ideal photocatalyst, one of its main disadvantages being the absence of activity within the visible uh, spectra of solar irradiation. Therefore, uh, the important uh, task is to broaden the light absorption capacity and photocatalytic activity of titanium oxide in the near uh, infrared and uh, visible regions. Uh, photocatalytic activity was shown to be determined by the phase composition and mixtures on the surface and inside the catalyst as well as uh, the initial size of its particles. Despite the great variety uh, of the works on photocatalytic processes with the application of the nanoparticles of uh, titanium oxide, still their optimal uh, characteristics features in the specific processes need to be determined, including the size, morphology, crystal structure connected with the highest photocatalytic activity. Application of porous bearers, uh, which are only active under the UV irradiation and have inside the pores uh, the particle that uh, are activated under the irradiation, uh, with the wavelengths between uh, 400 uh, up to 800 nanometers, look, looks a rather perspective area of works. So this approach could enable um, us to obtain the photocatalysts um, in both visible and uh, ultra-wide uh, spectrum. A modification or doping of the nanostructured uh, titanium oxide um, with a size less than 50 nanometers with other elements uh, is the approach uh, to be used in photocatalysis. Uh, uh, generally, there are three mostly used uh, doping types. The doping with the cations, with the anions, or with metals. For our research, we have selected the, uh, the third kind of the doping or modification, uh, namely with the, metal, with the metals. Doping with cations uh, substantially expands the adsorption spectrum of titanium oxide, increases the redox potential of radicals formed, and rises the quantum efficiency due to the reducing of the degree of recombination of electrons and holes. Nature and concentration of uh, alloying admixture will modify the charge distribution on the surface of titanium oxide, affecting the photocorrosion and its photocatalytic activity. Application of um, metal particles, therefore, helps to modify the surface of photocatalysts. There are data in the literature confirming that the novel metals such as platinum, silver, gold, palladium, nickel, copper, and rhodium, uh, rutinum, can essentially improve the photocatalytic activity of um, titanium oxide. Since the Fermi levels of these metals are below the that of titanium O2, the fruit excited electrons can pass from the conductivity zone on the metal particles deposited on the surface of titanium oxide, whereas the photogenerated holes remain within the valence zone. 
It can essentially reduce the possibility of recombination of electrons and holes. And as a result, the efficient separation, separation is ensured and uh, photocatalytic activity rises. Properties of photocatalysts were shown to depend on the doping metal particle sizes. When the size is below two nanometers, the composites show the high catalytic activity. It was suggested that too high concentration of metal particles will block the surface of titanium oxide and will decrease the photon's adsorption degree. Also, the metal particles themselves can act as electron pole recombination centers uh, that will decrease the photocatalytic uh, the efficiency. Therefore, their amount uh, uh, on the surface of uh, uh, the oxide uh, should be limited. It is also known that the nano-sized titanium O2 particles possess the highest catalytic activity. However, application of powder material in photocatalytic processes is rather difficult. Therefore, its application on porous bearing is needed in some uh, cases. And as a support, the inert materials can be used. To dope uh, titanium or two with metals, various met methods can be applied, uh, such as the sole uh, uh, gel method, vacuum deposition, chemical deposition from the gas phase, and so on. And uh, we, uh, for our experience, uh, we have selected the uh, structures of uh, um, anatas structures of titanium O2, uh, which possesses the uh, pronounced photocatalytic properties among the other uh, well known uh, crystal structures, rutil, anatas, and brookite. To reach the guaranteed results, uh, we have uh, calcinated or he uh, heated the uh, commercial titanium O2 uh, during 30 minutes at a temperature above uh, uh, 500 degrees centigrade with the excess of oxygen. And these pictures show, uh, show, the, um, show the image of how the particles of um, titanium, initial particles of titanium O2 looks like. Uh, we, for our method of modification or doping of particles uh, of um, nano-sized titan uh, titanium O2 particles uh, with noble metal, we have selected uh, the uh, chemical catalytic reduction of metals from wa water solution of uh, their complex salts under the action of reducing substances. The process uh, thus elaborated includes three main stages, for, uh, three main, main basic stages uh, uh, with the uh, washing uh, stages uh, between them. The main stages therefore involve a combined uh, sensibilization activation treatment of uh, titanium O2 particles in, in view to obtain the active surface. Uh, the second stage is the application of polymetallic coating on treated surface with the help of reducing solution following the chemical catalytic method. And three, treatment of the de deposited metal layer in the weak acid solution. Here on this slide, you can see the composition of the main working solution for the chemical catalytic processes. Um, first, uh, to the left, you can see the uh, composition of the solution for the combined sensibilization activate, uh, activation of the inert particles, and to the right is given the uh, work solutions for obtaining of uh, nickel titanium um, layer. Uh, we have uh, tested in our work uh, several types of the coating, uh, coating layers and coating solutions. And uh, you can see on this slide uh, the main solutions used to obtain the layers of uh, nickel molybdenum, nickel wolfram, and ni uh, triple alloy nickel molybdenum wolfram on the surface of the uh, used nanoparticles. 
Also, we have elaborated for uh, our tests, uh, for our experiments, for the special laboratory set up because we have uh, we were de dealing with the thin, with the fine um, nanoparticles of extremely small size. Uh, therefore, our purpose was to obtain the coating uh, of the metal on their surface, uh, a non-uniform coating. Therefore, we have used the specific uh, laboratory setup that you can see, which um, uh, uh, which design is presented uh, on this um, uh, on this uh, slide. We have found that the combined catalyst consists of the fine particles of uh, an attest form of titanium O2, which surface if it was partially coated with a polymetal alloy, in this case is nickel titanium or other, which contributes to the growth of its catalytic activity. In other, in our uh, in other experiment, we have uh, deposited, we have managed to deposit the thin layer of uh, silver uh, on the uh, surface of the nanoparticles. Uh, you can see here on this slide the composition of uh, uh, solution for the chemical catalytic uh, process. Uh, this uh, I need to uh, yes, uh, to mention that the process was carried out with a very high temperature during uh, just several minutes. It takes uh, uh, from uh, five to ten minutes generally. Uh, and um, we have found, we have examined the surface structure of the nanoparticles thus obtained, and it was found that, um, uh, the, for, for example, uh, particles modified with the silver um, uh, had different, different sizes, uh, which we can see uh, on the uh, photo uh, on the right side of this slide. Uh, and um, uh, the certain amount of uh, silver was present from 1.6 to 3%, up to the maximum 15% of uh, silver. Simultaneous uh, presence of the reduced uh, silver on the surface of the particles, along with the free cell surface uncovered with the metal, uh, may be favorable for the uh, charge separation during the photoradiation and improvement of photocatalytic properties of the obtained material. Uh, in our in our in our series of uh, series of um, of uh, experiments, we managed to obtain the titanium O2 nanoparticles coated with a nickel phosphor um, alloy. Here you can see the particles uh, uh, and the uh, uh, the particles and uh, the composition of the deposited layer and uh, uh, elemental analysis have shown that these particles. Uh, contain on their surface about 2-3% uh, of nickel as well as phosphorus and uh, stannium. It is uh, also possible that the trace, um, traces of palladium are also present on the surface, uh, which, is, uh, which was further used, further tested as catalysts, uh, uh, as a ca uh, catalyst for the uh, uh, photochemical processes. Uh, we have also proposed uh, the spe specific photoreactor, which um, which um, <clears throat> uses uh, the um, uh, sp special lamps for ultraviolet irradiation, high pressure lamps, and uh, the special uh, uh, the special area in which uh, the uh, non, uh, non fine uh, catalytic particles uh, with the uh, applied uh, active uh, layers uh, are used. Uh, the operation of the particles which have been uh, have been obtained using the uh, modified um, catalytic um, processes of um, uh, active layers depositing uh, was tested using the uh, specific photoreactor 
And uh, in our preliminary test, uh, we have uh, we have um, seen that uh, the particles, uh, the active um, particles, uh, were active uh, in the homogeneous for uh, in the uh, heterogeneous uh, photocatalytic process of the uh, decomposition of the acid blue colorant. And uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, according to the um, knowledge, uh, our um, knowledge that we have uh, regarding these processes, due to the photocatalytic um, process, the active radicals uh, are formed, and um, uh, we have a combination of the homogeneous and heterogeneous catalysis here and also uh, the using the spe special reactor uh, which have been elaborated we also uh, using this improved uh, hydrodynamic conditions inside the reactor and the effect of the photo uh, of the electrofluidation to remove uh, the uh, decomposition uh, products from the uh, process environment Therefore, we, it uh, has been shown that the chemical catalytic method of metal re reducing on the self surface of amortized form of titanium or two nanoparticles is generally a perspective way to create the efficient photocatalyst. Uh, the process is based on the three main stages, which can be easily operated. Uh, the uh, compositions uh, of appropriate working solutions were proposed, were modified and tested. Uh, the laboratory set up to obtain, or to obtain powder catalysts and the cone type reactor were elaborated. They have relatively simple designs. Um, and uh, the polluted water systems uh, are treated without the introducing of the chemicals with low uh, power consumption. And uh, process and reactors uh, elaborated will allow obtaining a composite material with targeted properties in the advantageous conditions. Uh, these particles can be recommended for the treatment of the waste uh, waters, water systems contain the, uh, containing the refractory toxic organic pollutants for their efficient decomposition. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Uh, should you have any questions? Yes, thank you, Dr. Uh, please, uh, uh, questions to the use of uh, titanium dioxide as a catalyst is a novelty, or you have some published papers in this area. What happens during the continuation of the commercial titanium dioxide? Uh -huh. I'll try to, uh, to answer these questions. Uh, generally, uh, of course, the using of titanium or two as a catalyst is not uh, a novelty. And of course, it is uh, uh, already uh, broadly used uh, uh, throughout uh, in, uh, in, and uh, you can find a plan, uh, you can find in the literature a plenty of publications devoted to this, uh, uh, to, to its application. But what is a novelty of our work? We have proposed uh, another one more, more method to improve its uh, photocatalytical uh, uh, properties using uh, uh, another approach, which has not been tested and proposed uh, before us. Uh, as to the, our publications, they are in the stage of the preparation. We have uh, several publications, but I am afraid that um, you have a chance to look through them because they are uh, mostly are given in Romanian language and uh, uh, they are published in our local journal, Moldovan journals, such as, uh, for example, the um, uh, Moldovan, uh, Moldovan, um, I will tell you, uh, the um, uh, Studia Universitatis Moldavia, for example, yes. Not to the chemical journal of Moldova, but the um, publications were uh, in the local uh, local uh, uh, local newspaper uh, local papers. What kind of reactor do you use? What are its uh, dimensions? 
uh, the kind uh, the uh, reaction uh, was uh, related to the laboratory set up we have tested the principle of its operation uh, we have uh, prepared and we have already received the moldovan patent for the design of this reactor so it could be uh, recommended uh, recommended for further testing and for further uh, applications uh, so uh, that's uh, uh, so we can say now that it's on the pilot stage on, of its elaboration from from laboratory to the pilot uh, stage so uh dear audience i'm honored today to present you uh the work entitled ketonal totomerism and geometrical isomerism of dehydroxyfumaric acid it's a dft study in gas and water so first i'd like to mention that dehydroxyfumaric acid is an organic acid formed from tartaric acid by dehydrogenation or slow oxidation and it's a proven intermediate in the cycles of decarboxylic and tricarboxylic acids and it's an important uh, intermediate in vegetal and living organisms so the uh, hydroxyfumaric acid recently became a molecule of interest in the scientific world, mainly due to Ashen Moser's proposal that glyoxylate and dehydroxyfumaric acid could have served as primary molecules in the synthesis of organic macromolecules in the constraints of prebiotic chemistry. And besides that, our previous investigations showed that dehydroxyfumaric acid and some of its salts and derivatives derivatives have wide practical applications and may be successfully used for the enhancement and preservation of wines as inhibitors of nitrosamines formation and as well as efficient scavengers of DPPH and BTS free radicals. But uh, we have to say that in spite of this interest, to the best of our knowledge, to date, there are no published theoretical investigations of dehydroxyfumaric acid conformational isomerism and totomerism. And in this context, the present research was undertaken to provide valuable data um, to for further use in both theoretical and practical areas so as can you as you can see from the um from the formula in the case of dehydroxyfumaric acid various conformations are possible for the two totomeric forms due to the intramolecular rotations along the single carbon carbon bonds and also due to the possible scene and antiperiprenal orientation uh, of the hydroxyl hydrogen with respect to the ketooxygen here for example we see um, uh, the uh, syn orientation um, and this is the anti-orientation so uh, the calculated harmonic vibrational frequencies revealed that there are 22 in ideal forms and 20 through Ketoforms uh, of the dehydroxyfumaric acid. And uh, here you have them all. Um, the isomers were um, nominated and arranged from the most stable uh, to, to the least stable according to the Gibbs free energy calculations. So we have um, from E1 to E22 and from K1 for the ketoforms through K23. Um, so the electronic energy enthalpy and Gibbs energy of each of those 45 isomers uh, were uh, calculated and using the, um, uh, the um, energy of U1 as the reference point for gas and the energy of U2 as the refer reference point for water, uh, we calculated the values of delta E, delta H and delta G. And the results show that the inidial forms of dehydroxyfumaric acid are a lot more stable than the keto forms, both in gas and in water. In the gas phase, for example, uh, this uh, structure E1 is more stable than the, uh, than the most stable keto structure uh, by uh, around 46.7 uh, kilojoules per mole. And in, uh, in water, uh, the uh, isomer E2 is more stable than, than the most stable keto form 
by 32 kilojoules per mole. Uh, further, the relative abundancy was calculated according to this, um, to the Boltzmann distribution equation, and it shows that in gas phase, 99.7% of the acid are represented by only three in ideal structures. You have the optimized structures here in the image, and uh, the um, uh, most abundant one is isomer E1 uh, with a, uh, over 87%, followed by E2 with almost 11%, and E3 by a little bit over 1%. Uh, we see that in water, uh, these uh, same three isomers account for 97.3% of the acid, but the abundancy is already different. The most abundant is isomer E2 with 38%, followed by E1 with 31%, and then by E3 with 27%. So moving further to the barriers of rotation, uh, we, we have here in the image some um, of the selected transition states of the isomerization um, interconversions. And um, these uh, isomerization processes can take place both through hydrogen transfer, like we see here, or through carbon-carbon uh, rotation or through OH rotation. Of course, the um, activation energy for the um, hydrogen transfer is around 150 kilojoules per mole. And we calculated the uh, activation energy for the rotational paths is a lot lower from five to 75 kilojoules per mole. Next, we see here the imaginary frequencies of selected transition state structures for the isomerization um, interconversions. As expected here, we see that the carbon-carbon inter internal rotation has the minimal frequency from around minus 40 to minus 100, being almost a pure rotational vibration. Um, also, we see that the imaginary frequency of the hydrogen transfer um, is around 1,090, uh, around minus 1,900, which is a stretching vibration um, frequency. And in the case of OH rotation, uh, the frequency is somewhere in between, typically in the range of minus 200 to minus 600. And um, calculation results uh, for water, uh, for the water medium, show that imaginary frequencies uh, for the rotational uh, paths are lower in water than in gas, um, as a rule. While for the hydrogen transfer reactions, um, uh, water give in, in the water medium, we see an, an increase um, in the imaginary frequencies. Um, that is probably due to the stabilization of the structures by additional hydrogen bonds um, with water molecules from the implicit solvent medium. Uh, so the keto, given that there are like uh, 75 um, conformers, the ketoenol tautomerism was studied um, for the three most stable in ideal structures. And uh, the energy barriers uh, were calculated um, using the energy differences between local minimum structures, those presented in table one, and the transition states. And uh, here this table presents the activation energy, the imaginary frequency, and the Gibbs free activation energy uh, of the ketonal interconversions. And um, of course, uh, as expected, here we see that uh, the barriers for the uh, direct um, conversion from the inidiol to the keto form, um, the energy barrier exceeds um, that the, the energy barrier for the keto form from the keto form to inidiol transition by around um, 50 kilojoules per, per mole. That basically means that, that is logical and it shows again that the inidiol uh, structures are a lot more stable than, than the keto structures. 
And it should be mentioned here as well that the activation energies um, for the ketone autotomerism are um, up to 20 fold greater than those for the isomerization interconversions. And this is, of course, explained by the fact that the mechanism of uh, ketone autotomerism is more complex and it involves more atoms as well as a geometrical rearrangement of the molecule. So this table here summarizes kinetic and thermodynamic data for the transition states of isomerization and tautomerization reactions um, for the three most stable inidioles in idiolic forms in gas phase and in water. We see here, um, for example, that um, in the case of isomerization reactions, uh, the equilibrium constant for gas is 0 0.13 and for water, it's 1.21 and 0 0.61. Um, if we move forward to the, the totemerization reactions, we see that the order of magnitude is 10 powered minus 10 um, for the gas reactions. And in water, this, the, constant, the, constant, the equilibrium constant is of 10 powered minus 7 order of magnitude that's showing a significant increase in the value of the direct reaction. So in conclusion, I'd like to briefly mention uh, that for the first time, the, the isomers of dehydroxyfumaric acid were theoretically identified and their geometrical isomerization and automerization was studied at the B3-LIP level of theory. It was found that three inidial structures account for the majority of the dehydroxyfumaric acid and in the gas phase and in water with different relative abundances. Isomerization and automerization reactions uh, were theoretically studied and a variety of thermodynamic and kinetic parameters were calculated. And also I'd like to add here that this uh, valuable information will be used uh, in further studies regarding the interaction between dehydroxyfumaric acid and its derivatives with various radicals, um, free radicals, in order to elucidate the most probable mechanism of reactions. And here my presentation ends, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for your presentation. Questions to Dr. Balkan? May I ask the question? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, yes, I have a small question. As I understand, you take in account the water as uh, some continuous model, yes? Not by the separate molecules. Uh, the question is, uh, why, why not? Because in principle, you can ha have some hydrogen bonds with surrounded water molecules. And these bonds can ch change maybe the thermodynamics of your process. So maybe yes, yes, thank you very much for the question. So um, this is uh, just uh, um, a starting, we were just starting to do this kind of calculations. And in order to, uh, to do what you suggested, we actually need a lot of a lot more computation power, like uh, for, for, the, for the present uh, work, it, it was pretty, it was pretty expensive to do all this work, uh, because there were 45 uh, isomers. And um, what you're suggesting, we are going to do that, but only with the three most stable inidioles uh, and maybe uh, using a, a lower basis set. Of course, it's, um, it's very important and uh, what you are saying, uh, but it's an entirely, uh, it's an entire different work. Here we used um, the SMD model uh, mm -hmm. just like just just to start just to see uh, which uh, which isomers um, should be taken into account in further studies mm -hmm. because it's impossible to take them all the 45 and what you are saying is of course very important especially for the for the next um, study of the totomerism 
we can see how many molecules, one, two, three, how many molecules uh, are arranged and, uh, and see how the, the energy is, um, um, is, is shifting, is changing. Okay, I understand, thank you, thank you very much. I also see that uh, here, Dr. Power uh, wrote. Um, Professor Power asked, how did you obtain the relative energies in water? It is necessary to know the solution energies, which is a hard task, please. Uh, so uh, we, I used the, the Orca calculation software, so everything was done automatically. Uh, here, like I already mentioned, we um, uh, treated water as a as a solvent, like a, like a continuum uh, with a with like a. Um, surface like model with the it's the electrical constant and um, we um, um, the orca we use the orca software uh, to have some yes some powerful supercomputers i agree with this uh, we work with the computers that we have otherwise the they are very approximate um this, uh, well, the, the basis set that I used is, is actually um, a very, um, a very good basis set. Um, I think it's uh, to, to, I didn't mention it here, but it's, um, it, it has a range of, um, of many functions. And um, I think that the results are, are pretty accurate because of the basis set that we used. Um, regarding the, the, the fact that the results are approximate, um, it's computational chemistry. And every time we, we use a different um, level of theory, a different basis set, uh, the results, of course, change. Uh, but we still can see a trend. We can see a trend. Um, re regardless of the basis set used, we can say that uh, the three individual structures are, are the most uh, stable ones. And um, I think it's the, the, the results are, are pretty much informative. Mm -hmm. um, what is the usefulness of kinetic and thermodynamic data obtained? So the kinetic, um, uh, constants show us um, uh, in order to in order to construct a, a kinetic a theoretical kinetic model uh, we can use the data obtained here uh, imagine we we replace the three individual structures like in space and we have the reaction rates the uh, we have the equilibrium constants um, between e1 e2 and e2 e3 uh, also, we we place um, we can place um, the um, keto forms uh, around, and um, this is important uh, to understand um, which um, isomers will, which isomers are more stable in gas, in water, in methanol, in other mediums. Um, because when we further move on to studying the mechanism of reactions with free radicals, we all can already base um, on the data that we already found here. For example, in the future, if you want to understand, um, if you want to make a model, a kinetic model of how this, um, this dehydroxyfumaric acid or other antioxidants that are its derivatives, um, how they interact in the physiological medium, for example. We can already have um, some structures. We don't have to start from, from zero. We already have stability structures. We, all, we can further build on, on this knowledge. Okay, thank you. Tell me if this is enough. Thank you very much for your Please, uh, Dr. Uh, you're welcome. Supported noble metals and their association with transition metals are the most commonly catalysts for total oxidation of methane 
and other volatile organic compounds present as pollutant impurities in air. So platinum, titania, seria catalysts are active and stable catalysts in complex oxidation of uh, hydrocarbons. Here, titania and seria immobilize on KIT6 and SBA15 mesoporosilica were support with high surface area and good redox properties for platinum. The metal support interaction was evaluated in terms of seria effect of or platinum and titania loading under condition of their dispersion of sil on silica supports with hexagonal and cubic mesoporous ordered structure. Effects of these uh, factors on catalytic activity were evaluated in methane combustion. In the first stage, it six with uh, uh, 10, 5, 10, S, and 30 uh, titania percent, and uh, SBA 15 with 5% uh, of titania were uh, obtained by direct synthesis. This, uh, uh, the obtained uh, uh, solids were used after for uh, immobilization of two steps, uh, in two steps of uh, different um, uh, precursor for titania and seria, following different orders. So, the obtained materials uh, contain mesoporous uh, structure typical for uh, kit as uh, six is a cubic structure and uh, hexagonal mesoporous structure for SBA 15. Uh, in case of uh, SBA, the morphology of uh, SBA 15 is uh, less uh, specific. Uh, uh, was uh, modifi modified during synthesis uh, process. XRD patterns at uh, uh, low angles show typical tool, a typical uh, uh, cubic mesopore structure for uh, uh, kit samples and uh, hexagonal uh, mesopore structure for uh, SBA 50. The uh, XRD patterns at uh, uh, larger uh, angles as show for samples uh, supported on uh, kit uh, six, um, crystalline peaks for uh, attributed to anatas and to dial. Uh, the intensity of this uh, peak degrees with uh, titania uh, uh, content. Uh, for um, uh, platinum was evident uh, crystalline peaks only for 1% platinum. Uh, we, opt, uh, we prepare uh, uh, materials with a different uh, percent of platinum, uh, uh, 0 0.25, 1 uh, percent, uh, 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 and uh, concentration of uh, seria was, uh, was percent. In case of uh, platinum, we uh, can see decreasing of uh, uh, peak intensity uh, after uh, uh, seria immobilization. For catalyst supported on SBA 15, uh, X ray diffraction did not reveal uh, crystalline species for uh, titania. Can be results of high dispersion, the presence of uh, smaller particles of titania, and possible incorporation into silica network.
XPS spectra uh, show uh, on the surface the presence of three different uh, platinum species, uh, Titania and uh, Seria in two oxidation steps. We can see the effect of uh, Titania uh, loading on uh, platinum uh, uh, metallic uh, platinum concentration on surface. Uh, the, uh, concentration of uh, metallic platinum increase uh, with uh, increasing of uh, titania loading. The presence of uh, seria uh, degrees uh, uh, platinum uh, oxidation, uh, uh, platinum uh, metallic um, uh, concentration on the surface. Uh, for the catalytic reaction, uh, uh, it's very important uh, the, the variation of uh, 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 rate uh, between uh, platinum zero and platinum uh, oxide. Uh, uh, two for catalytic reaction is very important the presence of uh, seria in three oxidation state because uh, can be co uh, the presence uh, of this kind of seria can be correlated with uh, oxygen vacancies on the surface. For um, uh, samples uh, supported on, on SBA uh, uh, 15, excuse me, 15, um, XPS show uh, similar species. Uh, uh, difference was observed for uh, Titania species uh, and also uh, on the percent of each uh, platinum species. We can see um, the presence of um, uh, cerium uh, degrees uh, the platinum uh, metallic uh, percent on the surface uh, and um, order of uh, immobilization uh, uh, influence to uh, the, the percent of metallic uh, uh, percent on the surface uh, with uh, uh, important effect uh, on a catalytic uh, uh, process. Reducibility of uh, catalyst supported on uh, kit uh, six uh, uh, were, was evaluated by a hydrogen TPR uh, prof, uh, um, method. We can see the increasing of the reduction uh, possibility uh, uh, in uh, uh, when was uh, 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 immobilized uh, Titania and Seria, Seria influence reduction, uh, Seria influence uh, to uh, reduction in case of uh, uh, samples with uh, platinum and uh, uh, the peak uh, obtained for uh, uh, platinum oxide reduction at lower temperature, uh, for this uh, peak, uh, we can see a, a shift, a lower shift to higher temperature. Reduction of uh, uh, seria titania uh, is, uh, uh, can be uh, was observed at a higher temperature around uh, uh, 500 degree. Uh, hydrogen uh, chemosorption uh, results uh, show uh, uh, significant effect on dispersion of uh, titania loading. The, uh, the, the higher uh, titania loading increase uh, dispersion very interesting is uh, uh, the low dispersion obtained for uh, lower um, titania loading and uh, increasing of uh, uh, platinum diameter. These uh, samples, uh, for these samples, we can uh, we observe the best uh, uh, catalytic activity for. Um, lower uh, uh, platinum concentration. In case of uh, a sample supported on SBA 15, uh, we observe uh, for the samples uh, with the platinum and uh, the titania, uh, two peaks at 
uh, loud temperature attributed to uh, platinum oxide uh, reduction, platinum oxide on the surface and inside of the pores. Other uh, broad uh, pick with a shoulder was observed at a higher temperature. Uh, this uh, peak was uh, attributed to uh, titania reduction. Uh, titania in a, a strong uh, interaction with uh, palladium oxide. Uh, for uh, this uh, uh, reaction, uh, for this um, uh, reduction, uh, uh, we consider that uh, hydrogen um, uh, spillover is uh, very important. In presence of uh, seria, um, we can see uh, the, uh, uh, a significant uh, change of uh, uh, reducibility uh, uh, profile uh, and uh, uh, significant is effect of uh, seria on uh, uh, platinum oxide re re reduction. Uh, when seria was uh, immobilized after platinum. So, uh, the catalytic uh, results uh, evidence uh, effect of uh, platinum uh, uh, loading on uh, uh, conversion and uh, to norm. Uh, Conversion, uh, the maximum conversion increase increased with uh, platinum concentration, but uh, uh, it's a very interesting uh, 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 this variation for the same concentration of uh, platinum, the same concentration of titania. Uh, uh, difference uh, uh, between these samples is uh, the support. Here we can see. Um, uh, a higher uh, conversion, uh, maximum of, co of conversion, but variation with temperature, uh, temperature is uh, different. Uh, we uh, explain uh, uh, this uh, difference uh, uh, by uh, different uh, dispersion and uh, 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 diameter of platinum. In case of uh, 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 samples uh, with uh, titania, we can see uh, a lower uh, conversion and uh, influence of titania uh, concentration on uh, the uh, on conversion, maximum conversion. The, uh, the effect of seria on catalytic activity was ev evaluated for the same titania content, uh, variable con uh, titania content and variable uh, concentration of platinum. Seria increase activity of titania supported uh, samples. Uh, the, the effect is more significant, uh, significant for lower titania loading. Uh, in case of um, uh, uh, plat uh, samples uh, supported on uh, SBA 15, we can see uh, 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 we, uh, an uh, insignificant effect uh, uh, on, uh, of seria on uh, platinum uh, uh, supported uh, samples uh, with 1%. Uh, in case of uh, uh, immob immobilization of uh, seria before uh, uh, platinum. The maximum conversion is the same, 100%, but variation is uh, different uh, with uh, uh, this sample. Explanation uh, was uh, 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 to the dispersion and uh, diameter of, of particles. So uh, for this um, reaction, we propose uh, three uh, step uh, uh, in uh, this uh, 
uh, reaction uh, is very important uh, uh, dimension of particles and uh, uh, dispersion of uh, platinum and uh, uh, titania uh, uh, too. Uh, the importance of uh, oxygen vacancies uh, for this kind of uh, reaction is too very important. Uh, finally, in conclusion, yeah, uh, high conversion was obtained for samples with uh, platinum. Uh, uh, we obtain uh, for 1% uh, platinum concentration uh, the best results. Uh, effect of metal supports interaction synthesis method, titania lo loading and serial immobilization of platinum species um, uh, are very important. important. Uh, seria increased the dispersion of platinum, decreasing the crystalline phase of platinum and uh, modified dispersion on support. Uh, we uh, observed two uh, synergistic effect uh, of all of these uh, properties on uh, catalytic results. Um, variation of uh, platinum metal and uh, titania loading uh, with uh, order of seria, uh, uh, serum immobilization led to uh, a variation of conversion in the methane uh, oxidation. And finally, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, dear colleagues, I, uh, I, I would like to ask you, please, will you follow the time? 15 minutes uh, report. Uh, we have already uh, our program exhausted. Uh, uh, we have time for one short question, and then we shall uh, uh, follow to the program. Uh, 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 question of Professor Power. Are there some common points between your catalytic system and the system presented by Dr. Kovalyova? Or is it some common interest in order to collaborate? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, it is uh, interesting for uh, collaboration but i i have uh, i have uh, many in the chat i i have many questions uh, i don't know if uh, i can uh, 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 respond to all uh, one more question uh, usually when the system contains three oxidation states yes is it possible the reactions of uh, proportional and disproportional. Is it? No. Uh, uh, reaction, uh, uh, I show uh, the mechanism uh, very important for this reaction is uh, platinum and uh, the, the rain between platinum and platinum oxide. Uh, the, the influence of uh, uh, and uh, in uh, reaction uh, uh, we see that uh, platinum, uh, the third uh, kind of platinum species, platinum hydroxide, uh, isn't good for reaction. Only, uh, this is very important, the presence of uh, platinum uh, uh, metal and platinum oxide, and uh, the rate between uh, these uh, influence the reaction. The presence is very important, the presence of titania and uh, uh, seria because uh, they influence uh, this uh, molar ratio, platinum, platinum oxide. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Hadishe, sir of 10, technical economic uh, assessment of electrochemical processes for sustainable removal of methylene blue. Many greetings uh, from uh, Turkey. Uh, we are a group of researchers from Izmir Institute of Technology. And as the professor kindly uh, recited the title of our uh, presentation, uh, we have uh, we studied the electrochemical process for removal of uh, methylene blue. So why methylene blue is a problem? It's a you know, component of uh, textile wastewater and textile wastewater discharges is a big environmental problem. So we need to 
get rid of the metal and blue as a model uh, die. Uh, so we would be able to go on and uh, for the future uh, stages of our research, uh, work on the textile um, uh, wastewater. So I would like to pass uh, the, these uh, a little bit uh, fast so that we can talk about what we have done actually. So textile wastewater treatment technologies are uh, listed as adsorption, coagulation, flocculation, ion exchange, constructed wetlands, and reverse osmosis. Uh, of course, these have uh, certain advantages and some limitations. So we were looking at um, uh, the electrolysis uh, as a a method for uh, getting rid of uh, or for the degradation of uh, methylene blue as a model dye. So we had a batch type uh, electrolysis cell. It had uh, the, uh, you know, in, in it, it had uh, flexible graphite electrodes, as you can see in the picture, uh, uh, with anode and cathode areas of 12 square meters, and they were placed parallel to each other in the electrolysis cell. Which we, what we were expecting in electrolysis cell was when we applied a certain potential, um, sorry, um, yes, here it is. Uh, when we apply a certain potential, uh, the water would be split and then some energy would uh, come out and some um, uh, radicals uh, and redox uh, reactions would occur in the, uh, in the, in the cell. So, with that, uh, we were thinking about how, wh what were the operational parameters uh, that uh, we would work on uh, in, a, in an electrolysis cell. So energy consumption, since we, we, we were uh, applying an, a potential, energy consumption would be one. So the product of the applied electrical potential, the current and the treatment period would be divided by the volume of the, um, the, the reactor and then we would have the uh, energy consumption. And in the, uh, of course, with that, uh, we were also interested in the operating cost. Uh, so we would see if it, we, if it's, if it, if it would be a, you know, a costly or not a uh, treatment process. So the uh, operating cost uh, was uh, calculated by US dollars per cubic meter. Uh, and uh, as you can see, it was like some, uh, some coefficient uh, multiplied by the energy production, uh, energy consumption, sorry. So that, uh, the, that, that coefficient is, is, as you can see at the bottom here, is the energy price um, in, in, in Turkey. And uh, so, uh, uh, the, we were t we were taking the March 2020 uh, uh, prices uh, for that. Uh, in this uh, research, we applied a, a design and data analysis uh, software, some tool. It's Design Expert 11 software. So we wanted to uh, statistically design the experiments and uh, thus do the data analysis. And we determined the major operating variables on methylene blue removal. The, these would be our dependent uh, excuse me, independent uh, variables. Uh, and we would be with, with changes to those uh, independent variables, we were expecting to see the changes in the dependent uh, variables, which are maximum uh, methane blue removal efficiency and minimum operating cost. So the independent operating uh, variables were, uh, were as follows, the electrical potential, initial pH, initial methylene blue concentration, electrolyte dose, and operating time. Um, and we also uh, determined uh, some ranges for those. Uh, the low range, the middle range. The middle range is assigned by the the um, uh, by the uh, program itself, and and the high range. So you basically enter the low and uh, high range, and it just you know gives you how many experiments you need to carry out to uh, to get get a, get a result. 
uh, meaningful results. So the uh, software uh, gave us back 46 experiments. So those 46 experiments were carried out for the removal of methylene blue. And four dependent parameters were analyzed as responses. And those uh, dependent uh, parameters were effluent uh, methylene blue concentration, methylene blue removal efficiency, energy consumption, and operating cost. Uh, on the, uh, you know, the bottom of the slide, you can see we, we only had, uh, you know, uh, space to put in just 10 experiments, but in total, please know that we have done 46 experiments and our independent variables were, as I said before, electrical potential, initial pH, initial dye concentration, electrolyte dose, and operating time. And the dependent parameters were the effluent methane blue concentration, removal efficiency, energy cons consumption, and operating cost. So uh, what we have found is uh, the, the, um, the system actually gives you these really nice um, 3D um, uh, graphs. Uh, and you can see, uh, since removal efficiency is one of the most important uh, dependent variables, we see combined effects of, say, two uh, independent variables on the dependent variable of removal efficiency. So let's look into the combined effect of initial pH and electrical potential. As you can see, basically, the initial pH, uh, you know, uh, when we compare it against the electrical potential, did not really have that much of a, um, the, uh, effect uh, on the removal efficiency, that, that much effect. Uh, the removal efficiencies were like 78.8% uh, at electrical potential of uh, three uh, volts and initial uh, pH of four and 99.2%, there, there, there was our maximum at electrical potential of seven, which was our maximum uh, applied electrical potential and initial pH of uh, 10. Uh, but as you can uh, see from the 3D, um, the, which, which you can see from the 3D, uh, the graph. Uh, also, uh, when we look into the combined effect of operating time and electrical potential, basically increases in operational time and applied uh, electrical potential maximize the uh, methane blue removal efficiency, which was basically uh, very much expected. I mean, in an electrolysis cell, if you maximize the electrical potential, and if you give it, a, 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 say, an infinite amount of time, of course, it's, gonna, uh, it's gonna, going to be uh, degraded. Um, and if we look into the electrolyte dose and electrical potential, uh, we see that uh, the, the methane blue uh, removal efficiency increased from 77.3% at uh, electrical potential of 3 volt and electrolyte dose of 0 0.4 grams per liter to 99.1% uh, at electrical potential of 7 volts and electrolyte dose of 6, 6, 0.6 grams per liter. So obviously in, uh, increasing uh, the electrical conductivity of the solution uh, by increasing the electrolyte dose also helps uh, by in, in the electrolysis cell, which is also kind of like expected. And if we look into the effect of electrolyte dose and effect of uh, operating time with the uh, with the, their combined effect, uh, we see that the operating time becomes important at low electrolyte dosages, uh, removal efficiencies being 63.5% and 95.5% for operating times of 30 and 90 minutes respectively at low electrolyte dosages. Um, and removal efficiency increased from uh, around 50% to 99.5%, almost 100%, when electrolyte concentration increased from 0 0.2 to 0 0.6 grams per liter. When you fix the operating time to 60 uh, minutes. So um, uh, that, 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 that's also uh, a, a good result. So uh, we believe that this is uh, due to increasing of both the production of some strong oxida oxidative species uh, at anode surface and electrical conductivity of solution by adding up 
uh, the, the electrolyte. Um, and uh, when we look into the operating cost evaluation, uh, the operating cost increased with increasing electrical potential because that means that we are using up more electricity. Um, the operating cost of the system was significantly decreased uh, from 0.04 to 0.009 dollars per cubic meters, uh, with a simultaneous decrease in electrical potential and operating time from 5 to 3 volts and 60 to 30 minutes, uh, respectively. Uh, so, and no significant change in operating cost of the system under the combined effects of initial pH and uh, methylene blue dye concentration and initial pH and electrolyte dose was observed for those uh, combined, dual combined effects. Uh, the uh, so we, what we have found is the op, uh, the optimum operating conditions were found as uh, the initial pH being four electrolyte concentration being the the maximum that we have used uh, zero point six grams per liter electro uh, electrical potential being three volts and operating time. 30 minutes. And for the initial um, methane blue concentration of 26.5 milligrams per liter, we have uh, almost uh, degraded all of it. Uh, the methane blue removal efficiency was 99.9% and the energy consumption was 0 0.178 kilowatt hours per cubic meters and the operating cost for the optimum conditions was found uh, 0 0.012 um, dollars per uh, cubic meter, 1.2 cents per cubic meter. And the conclusion, well, uh, it's an effective uh, solution for methylene blue removal. So it has, uh, you know, a potential for, uh, you know, application in the, uh, the uh, um, textile wastewater. But of course, in the textile wastewater, we have many more different dyes and other uh, components. So that use, that has to be, uh, checked uh, or, you know, reproduced there too. So there was a significantly uh, a positive effect of electrical potential and electrolyte concentration on methane blue removal efficiency. Um, and the combined effects of operating time and electrical potential and electrical potential and electrolyte concentration had a positive effect of uh, on uh, methane blue removal efficiency, while the other combined effects, the dual effects, did not really have a considerable effect on uh, the removal efficiency. And furthermore, the electrical potential was found as the most effective parameter on operating cost of the system. Uh, so this was our preliminary study and the results from the preliminary study. Thank you so much uh, for joining in and listening to this uh, presentation. So I think I will now stop share stop sharing and look into the chat section if there are any questions. Yes, sure. Professor Power is very active uh, today. He has a question to you. What are the relationships between independent and dependent par uh, parameters? One can suppose yes, uh, one can suppose that dependent parameters could be uh, computed from the independent ones. Oh, we thank uh, uh, Professor uh, Povar for his uh, really um, uh, productive and uh, supportive uh, comment and also a uh, question. Thank you so much. So yes, um, so uh, the independent um, uh, the independent parameters are the parameters uh, the, the, um, that are intrinsic for the studied um, setup. Uh, so, um, and the dependent ones are the ones that uh, that are related to the, the to the research question that we're asking, uh, like how much uh, efficiency is going to be, uh, you know, achieved and what the cost will be. So uh, those are the two most important dependent uh, variables, and they are closely dependent on uh, the uh, the energy consumption and uh, you know what governs the energy consumption and. Um, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, I'm, 
I hope that I can answer. Thank you. Thank you once again for your presentation. Ah, sorry, can I ask the small questions? Do of course. Hi. Well, uh, yes. Uh, thanks for nice talk. Uh, I have a question, maybe a remark to your Of course. You calculate the operating cost based on the removal of methylene blue. Uh, exactly. But, yes. 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 Removal. Thinks, Yes. yes, but in this case, you also have byproducts of oxidation. Uh, That's which true. Also, could be harmful. So, what mm -hmm. do with this fact? So, I think you better to reach mineralization. Exactly. Yeah. You are so right, Professor. You are so right. We haven't done an ecotoxicity uh, test on our product water. So that would also uh, should be done. You are uh, so right because um, it, it's another study, uh, but it was about the uh, it was about the ozonation of textile wastewater. We have found that the ecotoxicity of uh, textile, uh, the ozonated textile uh, wastewater, had uh, some ecotoxicity, not due to the chlorine content, but trace bromine content in the salt. So, <laughs> see, you are so right. That is a very important remark to make. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Once again for your presentation and answer to all questions. Thank you. Uh, your attention is presented to the report Synthesis of Silica Cellulose Hybrid Materials and Mesopore Silica Products via Soil Gel Mineralization. Um, the unique characteristics of ordered or periodic mesoporous materials with very large specific surface areas, more than 1,000 meters squares uh, or gram, well-defined mesoporous of controlled size is greater than 2 nanometers and is smaller than 50 nanometers. And morphology are obtained by using of amphiphilic organic supramolecules as structure directing agents, which ensure the formation of ordered hybrid organic and organic mesophases as precursors of the inorganic porous structures. However, more environmentally friendly and economical synthesis rules of ordered mesoporous silica materials were found to be necessary in order to be developed these applications on industrial scale. Synthesis of ordered mesoporous silica has been considerably developed with the objective of optimizing the chemistry and the processing aspects of the material synthesis. In this report, the main strategy developed with this aim is presented and discussed. Uh, silica cellulose hybrid material preparation. Mesoporous silica was synthesized by soil gel mineralization using the pneumatic liquid crystalline templates consisting of partially ordered suspensions of cellulose rod-like nanocrystals, 145 by 13 nanometers in size. Uh, suspension of uh, cellulose nanorods uh, were obtained, obtained by acid hydrolysis of microcrystalline cellulose powder. For this purpose, microcellulose powder was dispersed in sulfuric acid of various uh, concentrations. The suspension was kept at 20 and 45 degrees C for one to for, uh, 224 hours. Uh, then it was diluted by distilled water with vigorous stirring and silicic acid was immediately precipitated with sodium metasilicate solution to pH um, 6, uh, 8, and 10. The precipitate was separated and washed with water and ammonia sulfate solution. The samples were dried at room temperature and submitted for thermal analysis. After the thermal analytical study, stepwise calcination of the sums was carried out at 130, 200, and uh, 600 uh, degree C for two hours. Various biomacromolecules and polymer colloids have been used as structure directing agents of silica. They include polysaccharides. Cellulose is the most abundant natural biopolymer, which is renewable by biodegradable and non-toxic. It is polysaccharide composed of beta-link D glucose units. 
Its structure explains its characteristics properties, such as hydrophilicity, uh, chirality, biodegradability, and high functionality. Uh, figure one shows cellulose nematic phase used for template-directed synthesis of mesoporous silica, a schematic representation of the higher nematic phase structure, b illustration showing the relationship between nanocrystal screw symmetry and gallical pitch resulting from twisted close packing of nanorods. Uh, Table one, physical absorption of nitrogen by fully mineral, uh, mineralized silica obtained. Uh, in this table, we can see uh, the values of uh, specific surface area by BET, external specific surface area and pore volume uh, by BGH method, uh, by uh, single point method, and uh, values of diameters. Table two, physical adsorption of nitrogen by fully mineralized silicas obtained at various uh, pH value uh, during one hour. The acid promotes the solubilization of cellulose uh, of cellulose in the, form of, in the form of chains with a low degree of polymerization within one hour and an increase in the specific surface area. Glucose is produced according to a mechanism of two, uh, two uh, first order uh, pseudo-gomogeneous reactions, cellulose, glucose, degradation products. Figure two, isotherms of low temperature adsorption, desorption of nitrogen and pore size distribution curves for fully mineralized mesoporous silica samples obtained on a cellulose template hydrolyzed with sulf uh, south uric acid for two hours at different pH values and uh, H2SO4 concentrations. Uh, Figure eight, uh, figure three, uh, schematic representation of plaque mesoporous SBA 16 and nit uh, nitrogen sorption isotherm at 77 Kelvin for SBA 16 with a bottle shaped or cylindrical pores showing clearly a broad history of the slope. Uh, figure four, X-ray of SBA-16. The figure shows an enlargement of the diffraction pattern with indices of diffraction planes, corresponding to spacing 1100211 and 220. X-ray diffraction patterns of SBA-16 demonstrate a three-dimensional image with cubic symmetry of pores, space group IM3M. The uh, cubic uh, phase consists of two non-interpenetrating systems of three-dimensional channels with uh, spherical cavities at the intersection. Such a three-dimensional structure can be expected to provide more favorable mass transfer kinetics compared to the 2D SPA-15 framework. Uh, conclusions. During the silica salt gel transition, organic inorganic combinations of negatively charged cellulose nanorods S minus and anionic varieties of silicon four oxide I minus are created. The combination of partners with the sun charge is possible if the formation of the SMI mesa structure is mediated by counter ions and plus which must be present in stoichiometric amount. In this case, the removal of the template from the ordered mesa structure is facilitated and the probability of its destruction during calcination decreases. This circumstance plays a positive role for low temperature synthesis when the degree of condensation of oligodromeric silica ions forming silica per walls is low. This problem lies in the field of fundamental and practical interest of researchers in the development of new synthetic
routes uh, that make it possible to facilitate the mineralization of an organic template. Thank you for your attention. Uh, wish you have a nice day. And if you have any questions, please. And please email them to me also. Yes, uh, thank you for your presentation. Any questions? To Dr. Kuzisova? Yes. Uh, questions? Professor Power, you are welcome. Why did you choose just uh, these two p uh, uh, page values? Uh, please, uh, will you answer? Uh, two pH values. Uh, we uh, have chosen two pH values because pH values are critical parameters uh, during silica synthesis. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. Any other questions? If not, thank you. Uh, but why? Uh -huh. But why? Uh, 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 it is a good. Uh, known fact that at various pH values, uh, pore structure of silica is uh, differs uh, very much. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, pH uh, pH two or five, uh, the structure is microporous, and pH more than uh, seven. Uh, the structure mesoporous and mesomacroporous. Okay. Uh, what kind of silicon uh, uh, samples dominate? Species, species, silica species? Yeah, silicon species. Uh, uh, what do you mean, uh, silica species? Uh, silicic acid? Silicon species. Uh, Professor Power, what do you mean uh, asking about uh, the silica species? Sp species. What? Uh, what? What? Uh, uh, uh -huh. I, I don't understand. Uh -huh. Silica species. Uh, it is various uh, macromolecules of uh, silicic acid. Uh, dear participants, let me to present you my report entitled is the hydrogen bond in environmental redox processes as a pseudo young Taylor effect. Uh, the majority of environmental processes are essentially based on the chemical transformations that involve either electron or proton transfer or both. Therefore, revealing the micro mechanism of the latter is crucial for the understanding of possible manipulation of these processes. Um, uh, on the other hand, uh, the vibronic coupling theory, mostly the pseudo Jan Teller effect, is the only source of uh, spontaneous uh, symmetry breaking of high symmetry configurations of polyatomic systems was shown to control the proton transfer between two molecular system, systems often termed as a hydrogen bond. This is then allowed us to estimate the main parameters of the H bond, the energy barrier for the proton transfer between the interacting molecule system. In this presentation, uh, you show how the pseudon Taylor effect influences the energy barrier for the proton transfer, general with several illustrative uh, chemical processes as example. At the outset, uh, let me briefly re recall the main points of the theory of the pseudon Taylor effect. Uh, in this approach, the problem of stability or instability of molecular nuclear configuration may be reduced to consideration of the culture K, K uh, of the adiabatic potential energy surface of the system in the arbitrary direction Q at the point of extremal, uh, for which the first derivatives are zero. In the second order perturbation theory, with respect to small nuclear displacements, the expression for the culture of the adiabatic potential of any 
uh, molecular system in its uh, reference states uh, Psi, uh, electronic states Psi zero can be written as the sum of two terms, equation one. The first term K zero is the so-called primary force constant. It determines the distorting force arising when the nuclei are displaced with respect to the frozen electronic distribution. The second term, term KV, being always negative, results from the vibronic mixing of the reference and the excited electronic states. It takes into account the reduction of the force constant due to the relaxation of electrons, making allowance to, for them to follow the nuclei. The matrix elements uh, F in the numerator, numerator of the vibronic contribution KV mm -hmm. are the old diagonal of vibronic coupling constant. Uh, they are non zero if the product of reducible representations of the wave function C0 and Ci contains the reducible representation of the displacement Q. It was proved, uh, proved analytically and confirmed by a series of numerical calculations that for any molecular system, the value of K0, K0 is positive. Hence, the negative coverage K and therefore the structural instabilities and distortions can be achieved only due to negative vibronic coupling component KV. And if the condition of instability, of instability equation three uh, holds. Um, in the simplest, in the simplest uh, two-level problem, when only the non, only one excited state contributes significantly to the instability of the ground state, we get the following circular uh, equation for the two states, equation uh, five. Uh, where uh, the solution of this Two by two equation is straightforward. Is straightforward, and um, uh, it gives us the functional dependence of the potential energy on the instability coordinate equation. Um, the, uh, it is seen that uh, the uh, energy of adiabatic potential as a function of coordinate depend on the uh, three parameters of the pseudo-Yam-Teller effect. Uh, usually, these parameters are estimated by fitting the general formula uh, obtained from the vibranic theory to the initial calculated energy profiles, which are the cross sections of the diabetic potential energy surfaces of the system along the instability coordinate. Uh, the first system, the first system we have considered is the is the uh, B fluoride and ion. It was established to both experimentally and by the benchmark quantum chemistry chemical calculations that this ion is linear and center symmetric in the gas phase, but in crystal structures, shifts of the proton from the midpoint are often observed. The main goal of the present study is to demonstrate that with increasing FF distances, the instability of the central position of a proton uh, and the appearance of the double well adiabatic potential energy surface for proton transfer are due to the pseudo-Yam-Teller effect. Uh, the investigation of this system was started from the reference configuration of uh, D infinity H symmetry. The geometry optimization has uh, shown that its equilibrium nuclear configuration correspond to the symmetrical position of each atom. 
no imaginary frequency is observed. Uh, at the same time, the vibrational frequencies analysis of the anion uh, at increased flora and flora and distances indicates the presence of one imaginary frequency corresponding to the low symmetry sigma u type distortion, which is mainly associated with the displacement of the proton towards the one of the fluorine patterns. Um, it is uh, seen from the table that with increase in the effect distance, the height and width of the barrier to proton transfer also increased. The ground state wave functions of the system belong, belong uh, to the sigma G representation of the D infinity H symmetry point group. Some of the valence molecular orbitals are shown in figure um, and on the left. According to the pseudo Young Taylor effect, excited states that produce the instability of the ground state should have uh, the symmetry sigma u. The first uh, sigma u excited state is formed by one electron excitation from the HOMA uh, three, 3 sigma u to the LUMA 4 sigma g. Uh, calculations have shown that the uh, uh, um, thus uh, we obtain the two uh, level to the Antiller problem. Uh, to estimate the uh, parameters of the vibrant coupling between the ground and the excited state, states uh, of initial calculations of energy profiles, which are cross sections of the adiabatic potential uh, surface of the system along the coordinate of instability sigma u were performed. Uh, results for several distances are shown in, in the table. Uh, from the figure, it is seen that at equilibrium, um, the adiabatic potential is a single well one. That is, the proton is located in the middle uh, between the fluorine atoms. Two other curves are uh, the cuts for the increased fluorine fluorine distances. It is seen that with increasing the symmetric, uh, symmetric uh, D infinity H nuclear configurations becomes is unstable with respect to displacement of the central proton to one of the fluorine atom. And the uh, adiabatic potentials become the double well ones. The parameters were estimated by the fitting procedure uh, mentioned above. It uh, follows that uh, hydrogen bond in hydrogen by fluoride can be described in the framework of the pseudo Taylor effect. All calculated potential energy curves along the off center proton displacement wholly coincide with those predicted from the general Wabernick theorem. It's um, uh, only seen that the breathing mode that controls the FF distance between the two fluorine atoms plays, uh, plays a very important role in the proton transfer dynamic in such systems. The next task uh, was to demonstrate the pseudo Young Taylor origin of the proton transfer energy barrier in the protonated and protonated water clusters. Uh, it is uh, known that uh, proton and liquid uh, water interact with surrounding water molecules forming the proton centered molecular clusters, uh, in clusters of the type. Uh, which can be stable, or stable or unstable. Um, we uh, have considered the uh, four clusters in which uh, two molecule waters, uh, four, uh, four and uh, six water molecules around the proton. Populations uh, uh, 
have shown that all the acidic proton and the water clusters in the high symmetry, possible symmetry uh, configuration are unstable with respect to the nuclear displacement, leading to forming of the dihydronium cation and some water. However, calculations uh, potential energies uh, for increased OO distances show that uh, the adiabatic potential becomes a double well one and the height and width of the barrier proton transfer uh, also increase. Unlike the dihydronium cation, uh, the which, uh, <coughs> the cluster in which uh, the zundel, zundel cation is surrounded by four water molecules uh, has a double well shape. The ground electronic uh, state of the system belong to the A1 representation of the D to D symmetry point group. Uh, the out of center displacement of the central proton towards one of the oxygen atoms is a B2 type distortion. According to the pseudon Taylor effect, only the excited states of the B2 symmetry contribute to the instability of D to D nuclear configuration. The uh, 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 the uh, adiabatic potentials were calculated and the parameters were estimated. Uh, thus, uh, taken into, uh, it was from the taken into account only the first salvation sphere around the zindel cation in the cluster uh, leads to a double well adiabatic potential in the surface along the hydrogen bond coordinate and to instability of the central position of the proton. <coughs> uh, of uh, the two fundamental structures involved in the proton transfer process in water, the deprotonated water cluster, uh, water cluster anion H3O2 minus is especially interesting because it involves in a strong low barrier hydrogen bond. Uh, the calculated structure of uh, an ion is shown in figure, in figure nine. Uh, the potential energy curve describing the displacement of the shared proton with the oxygen atoms fixed at their separation in the global minimum structure has a double minimum shape with a very low barrier, approximately 130 reverse centimeter. Um, optimize the... Uh, we start uh, uh, our study with a uh, nuclear configuration of uh, uh, C to H symmetry. Um, the calculations is show that uh, this geometry is uh, unstable with respect to two um, two uh, distortions. Uh, one of them is uh, B, uh, BU, where a proton is uh, displaced uh, to one of the oxygen atom, uh, but uh, structure has to, uh, remain, remain uh, uh, planar. Uh, this configuration in its turn uh, also is unstable with respect to the out of plane, uh, out of plane uh, displacements of the atoms, and uh, these two 
uh, to uh, these two ways uh, is shown on the figures on the right. Every uh, every at every st stage, uh, the decrease in the energy takes place. Um, <clears throat> um, uh, having determined the excited states which are active in the pseudo Young Taylor effect, and having calculated the corresponding cuts of the adiabatic potential surfaces, one can obtain analytical dependence of the energy on the corresponding distortion by applying the fitting techniques. Uh, discussed above. And thus, the equilibrium structure uh, structure of uh, C1 symmetry can be realized in two ways. Uh, C2H uh, transforms in uh, C2V and in uh, to the equilibrium structure, or C2H transforms in CS. Uh, configuration and then in the equilibrium nuclear configuration of this N9. Uh, in the same way, we analyzed the, the origin <coughs> of the energy barrier to proton transfer in two protonated dimers in uh, proton bonded two butanon molecules and uh, in the proton, the proton bonding pyridine molecules. In every case, uh, we, uh, we have shown that uh, in the, the high symmetry nuclear configuration, both cis uh, systems are unstable uh, with respect to the displacement of the proton or towards one of the molecules. Uh, to explore the pseudo Jan Teller effect theory, uh, we calculated, uh, we find uh, firstly the excited states, can, which uh, contributes uh, significantly to the pseudo Jan Teller effect, and uh, calculated uh, and calculated the uh, energy profiles along the coordinate of instability. Uh, parameters of the pseudo Jan Teller effect were estimated uh, and uh, analytical um, expression for the energy uh, is uh, thus uh, was obtained. And uh, one, more, uh, one more system which are considered uh, is uh, case of excited states, state intramolecular proton transfer, uh, using the, as example, the malone aldehyde molecule. Um, <clears throat> the initial calculations show that the transition state, the proton-centered configuration of C2V symmetry is unstable with respect to the off-center proton displacement towards one of the oxygen atoms, both in the ground in the, and in the uh, first uh, four excited states. The singlet and triplet excited states of B2 symmetry are uh, formed by pi pi one electron excitation from the highest of the pi molecular orbital of uh, B1 symmetry to the lowest unoccupied P orbital of A2 symmetry. The n pi excited uh, states, um, the, N, the B1 symmetry excited state correspond to excitation from the oxygen lone PR uh, uh, orbital to the lowest uh, unoccupied molecular orbital. It is an uh, pi excitation. Um, uh, for 
as area to be explored from the Yantelier effect, we need to know the excited states that can contribute to the instability of the reference states of V2 and V1 symmetry. Uh, for this uh, purpose, uh, uh, since uh, the coordinate of instability is transformed according to the V2 representation of C3V point symmetry group, the vibrant contribution to the coverage of the AP of the B2 states comes from the vibronic mixing of the states with the higher energy excited states of A1 symmetry. Similarly, the vibronic coupling of the reference singlet and triplet excited states of B1 symmetry with the higher lying states of A2 symmetry results in the non-zero negative contribution to the coverage of the elevated potential. Uh, we have calculated all uh, uh, energy profiles for all uh, considered states and uh, um, uh, we have shown that the instability of the hydrogen centered nuclear configuration of malonic and aldehyde in uh, its uh, pi pi and n pi excited state originates due to the two dental mixing of the states with the higher lying uh, states of uh, the appropriate mm -hmm. symmetry through the asymmetric B2 uh, vibrational mode. Um, all the calculated Potential decays along the center patterns in displacement wholly coincide with those predicted from the general vibronic theory. Uh, as a conclusion, I, I'd like to say that it was shown that the hydrogen bonds in all the considered systems can be described in the framework of the pseudoyam Taylor effect. In all the considered systems, with the hydrogen bonds are calculated. Attention of energy curves uh, shown by points uh, and the figures along the center uh, protons wholly coincide with those predicted from the general uh, vibronic theory. Thus, the function of dependence of the potential energy on the instability coordinate following from the pseudo Taylor effect theory. With the parameters estimated using quantum chemical calculations, conserves as a parameterized and analytical model of the adiabatic potential, which can be used to simulate the proton transfer process in such systems. Thank you very much for attention. Uh, Dr. Gorica, thank you very much for your presentation. Now questions, please. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, is ready to, to, to raise the question. Please. Yes, uh, thank you very much for your nice fundamental talk, which come back me personally to the university stage. <laughs> okay, I wonder, is it possible to compare your calculation with some experimental data? So it's possible to observe the Jan Taylor effect by experiment, for example, by infrared spectroscopy or so on. Uh, 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 in general, uh, the structure is uh, uh, is uh, uh, obtained no our no by our calculations mm -hmm. by experimental. I don't know precisely what experiments <laughs> were used, mm -hmm. uh, but. Uh, uh, не знаю значит, напрямую какие эксперименты показывают вот но для других систем в общем например что, что можно вот как использовать что вы 
не поняла вот вопрос. Как можно увидеть это проявление а, этого эффекта экспериментально? Ну, эффект это... какие, или какие-то ну, барьеры понижаются? Там, ну, только изменяется структура, только то, что симметричная структура неустойчива. Это в спектрах как раз видятся уже другие частоты, чем симметричные. То есть это объяснение искажения системы. Ну, Что-то это у вас в расчетах появляются, а в эксперименте они тоже проявляются? То есть, ну, да, да, для многих систем, например, для гетероциклов очень сильно. То есть они не плоские, а для счет чего и как можно уменьшить их искажение, например, упластить менять параметры псевдоэффекта и, соответственно, можно понизить барьеры, например, не плоскую гетероциклическую систему и вернуть в плоское состояние вот в предыдущих наших работах здесь. А здесь была презентация, но и здесь вок, the task was the, to demonstrate that the origin of the proton transfer energy barrier is the pseudonym Taylor effect. And the uh, analytical curve uh, obtained from the vibranic theory is, uh, can be used in further dynamic calculations of the dynamic of the proton transfer. Okay, thank you. <laughs> A question of Professor Pohor. Did you use the Gaussian program for calculations in general? How long, how long calculations? Uh, 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 time consuming your program. Uh, uh, <coughs> uh, yes, we uh, used uh, the Gaussian and Gamis, Gamis, Gamis uh, programs for calculations. Uh, for uh, the systems uh, presented here, here, here the, uh, the, uh, rather small molecules. It, uh, this procedure is not very time consuming. For, for more uh, complicated uh, systems, it's, yes. Uh, computers, PC computers, we use the. Uh, is it possible to use in your calculations? The no barrier theory. Uh, uh, what do you mean the no barrier theory? No, uh, developed uh, by Professor Peter. Are your results for the gas phase? How many molecules of uh, 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 water can you consider? Only for gas phase? Or, or? Uh, uh, we consider in the gas phase, uh, except uh, it was the uh, um, We have considered uh, dihydronium cation surrounded by the uh, water molecules. And uh, uh, to take into account solvents or uh, we, uh, uh, the task is uh, demonstrate to internal reasons Uh, for systems to be distorted and the uh, influence of the surrounding we do not uh, take the interpunct mm -hmm. okay. for uh, gas uh, hello. how many molecules of H2 can you consider I, I have demonstrated that we in our Uh, precisely calculations uh, Taylor, uh, took into account four water molecules, but we have considered clusters uh, with uh, six water molecules. More questions? Uh, this theory, uh, okay. Uh, okay, uh, this is recommendation. Kinetic parameters. Kinetic parameters, uh, no. And the thermodynamics, uh, we theory, uh, no. 